TikTok, you don't stop. What is going down? Surprise. Yeah, that's why we live. <laughs> we are making magic happen, man. I, I, I'm super excited. So, so good to see you. What are you doing? What are you up to? What's the news? How are you feeling? You're not partying, are you? You're not making magic happen, are you? Ooh, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> what up, dudes? How are you doing? Get your water. Get your water. We practicing. We be on sober today. Because we happy as tornadoes in trailer parks. Damn, Skippy. <laughs> What's going down, you guys? I'm so stoked to see you. I was going to go live with my homie. Hey, what's up, Tim? I was going to go live with uh, with my boy, Journey. And he's like, dude, Matt, the things are happening. I was like, oh, dude, it's cool. I'll, I'll go live. And I'll, I'll just like chill out with my people, man. We'll see how many. Let's see how many lives that we can shift today, <laughs> tonight. Who knows, man? Last time we had some cats from like the original voice of like Mortal Kombat showed up. And he's like, dude, <laughs> let's go live. Who knows? It's it's a surprise. It's the surprise. <laughs> What's up, man? Um, I'm so stoked to see you guys, man. So let's let's talk about uh, what do we want to talk about? Here's okay. I was in the gym earlier, and here's what I realized: not a single person knows what they're doing. Jimmy, what's up? Nobody knows what they're doing. Just, like I'm in the gym and I'm watching people and I'm going, they don't know what they're doing. Howdy, <laughs> what's up? They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. And I, I don't mean like they, they're lifting the weights wrong. Still trying, you're the best. If you're trying, you are doing. I'm so proud of you. Hell yeah, keep that shit. Does alcohol affect dopamine efficiency? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, most people that have an addiction um, have the addiction because they're chasing the dopamine. I have extreme ADHD. Hey, what's up, Rose? And because of my ADHD... Um, I have a very addictive personality because just the thought, at least back in the day, just the thought of alcohol was enough to release dopamine to bring on the next shot or the next beer or the next conversation, whatever that is. And then over time, alcohol creates this deficiency where it's almost impossible for you to basically find joy and create happiness uh, without the sauce, man. So here's the trip. When you practice drinking less alcohol, you're allowing your body to physically acclimate to what it naturally does best, which is create dopamine, find joy, create, get creative, and do all these very expansive things that alcohol gives us the illusion of. That illusion feels real, and so we have very real reactions to very abnormal situations. Uh, you only get dopamine uh, from the first drink, G. Good. That doesn't mean we stop chasing it, G. So the reality with this is just the thought alone. You can trigger a dopamine release with the power of your mind. That's how astronomically insane your thoughts can be. If your thoughts can bring you happiness, your thoughts can bring you sobriety. So with that first drink, there's going to be this equal secretion in almost every drink until the point of blackout. That's why most people that have ADHD drink to the point of blackout. They're chasing it. They're chasing it. They're chasing it. And the more you put in your system, the more you're convinced that you're actually happy <laughs> and the dopamine is there. It's a false dopamine release and a false emotional connection to a reality that feels very real. So that's why we get ourselves into all kinds of shit. I fell off, but I'm back now. Fuck yeah. I'm stoked for you. Hang on. Wrong button. We're getting bright. Yeah, that's what we want. Um, so true. It's a trip though. Like, so like I have ADHD also. Dude, ADHD is no joke. It's a superpower if you want to utilize it as such. The trip with it is I didn't realize, actually just released a video, that I drank my way all the way to my deathbed um, and then realized that I had extreme ADHD. <laughs> all of my symptoms, <laughs> every, my whole life, I thought I was fucked up and weird and disconnected. No, I, I have ADHD. <laughs> Michelle, what's up? Go to sleep. What are you doing here? Michelle, aren't you supposed to be? Oh, she's got, she's got a regimen. There's a method to her madness, okay? Don't, don't, you know, set a bedtime. Count sheep. <laughs> I have ADHD and anxiety. Uh, I love that, man. Your ADHD has this really, really, really powerful element to it What helps you over-process information and basically get to the end of every sentence and create the subliminal anxiety. That anxiety right there is enough to get, to, to literally create so much frustration. You go like, please just make it fucking stop. Just, if I could stop thinking, if I could stop knowing all the answers, if I could just shut this off for a minute, my anxiety would go away. This is why we want to practice not controlling our thoughts, but reacting to these thoughts and our subtle reminders and shit. 
Um, I have ADHD, dude, 100%. So check this out. One of these things that I do, this tattoo, AH, I'm an anxiety hacker. Um, and as an anxiety hacker, hang on, what about those who really have anxiety? You make videos. Um, everybody has anxiety. It's a natural part of life. The amount of anxiety you have is derivative with all kinds of different things. So when you say actually have anxiety, you're no different than any other human. You may just be experiencing more. So with that, gracias, bro. Uh, it, uh, has, does, I, I got to learn a new language. Uh, why do I get violent when I drink? Because the gates are down, man. There's nothing stopping you. The bouncer, you've kicked the bouncer out of the room. <laughs> There's nobody stopping you from acting out. And part of that has to do with the fact that you don't care. Alcohol removes our inhibitions. So think of it like this, man. If you were in a room with me right now and you, someone walked in that you didn't like and you started getting high feet, I'm like, whoa, 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 hold up, bro. You don't need to get violent. But if I leave the room and you're still pissed, there's nothing stopping you from acting out. You don't care at that moment. So you literally act upon your emotion. You react to your own thoughts opposed to responding from a conscious place because you know that if you weren't drinking, you wouldn't be that violent. You probably are a lover. <laughs> You're probably a really fucking nice dude. But then once the sauce gets in there, you trigger all the shit. Polly Shore, that's our first one. It's a drinking game. Every time someone says Polly Shore, I drink, right? We're going to see how long we, we get through this one. <laughs> But that's a trip. It doesn't mean that alcohol makes you angry. It just removes the thing that keeps you from acting on your emotions. And this is why you're not going to like this. Healthy people don't do that when they drink. What alcohol does is it amplifies our emotions. We think it dumbs them down. We think it removes this shit. It actually is an amplification unit. Polly Shore, bro, number two already. Goodness gracious. How do you not have the urge to drink when your uh, friends are? Fuck them people. They can do what they want. I'm my own person. You're your own person. You're not obligated to drink. If your life is based on the influence of others, you got to surround yourself with people that actually give a shit about your health. Otherwise, you're going to dip in the sauce just like them. If they don't have your health and your future in mind, they're simply circumstantial. It means that without the alcohol, you guys probably aren't really that close to friends. Or maybe you are. But if they really give a shit, they'd stop influencing you. Or here's a better part of it. You, as a human being in control, need to or must practice not giving your emotions to people that don't have your health in mind. Just one more shot, bro. Come on. You get it? All you got to do is say, I'm cool. Just say no. It sounds dumb. It sounds like some shit you're going to hear in dare class. And you will. But the reality is, is that so much of our environment, so many people that we care about influence us to do shit we don't like and simply because they're there they're the safety net don't trip man i'll make sure i call 911 if you pass out <laughs> what the fuck i don't want to jump off the roof dude i only had the thought in my head because you put it there see what i'm saying Polly shore goddamn that's number three cbt or cbd also helps do you have seizures from withdrawals i died from withdrawals uh, my withdrawals were so bad, I was tortured for 250 hours in four hospitals. <laughs> my withdrawals literally put me in ICU twice. Uh, I went into cardiac arrest twice. Um, seizure, I had to go into surgery. Two veins open up in my throat. Paula Shore, fucking shit, is that five? It, I'm just, I should have just named this. Paula Shore is live. 11 days, holy shit. You're going to be so hydrated. I already am. <laughs> no, it's my favorite ex-alcoholic. <laughs> I love hearing that shit. That's awesome. You know, I, I gotta say this, homie, he, he, he did a duet with me today, he did a stitch. Let me, let me drink to this real quick. Petite, oh hey, what's up girl? So good to see you. You didn't just wake up, did you? <laughs> Check it out. This dude goes, yeah, I, I love this, I love this. Because he stitches my video and goes, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. And this guy says he's an ex-alcoholic. And I believe him. <laughs> It was so good. It was so good because once again, man, that's like it, it, it's like terms are new, concepts are new. Everything feels foreign if you're unfamiliar with it. When we're unfamiliar with something, we operate from a place of scarcity. Like we're like, what is it? I don't even want to accept it. I don't know anything about this. I don't want to let it into my life. So this is why I drip feed the concept of ex-alcoholic. Most people that have called themselves an alcoholic their whole lives actually aren't alcoholics anymore. They're ex they don't have an addiction. They don't drink, they don't crave it, they don't want it, they don't think about it, it doesn't rule their life. 
They've broken the physical addiction. They could pour drinks for people. I've talked to numerous people who have been like, my mom still calls herself an alcoholic. And I asked her if she is still an alcoholic and still has an addiction. My mom says no. And then I asked her, well, why do you call yourself an alcoholic? She says, because, because that's what you're supposed to do, right? She's like, no, mom, you're an ex-alcoholic. You don't have any problems anymore. You don't even want to drink. So how could you consider yourself an alcoholic when you don't have a problem? She's like, I never fucking thought of it like that. And it's because of that time to eat dinner, get that protein, high protein, low sodium. <laughs> get it. The trip with that is a lot of people just don't realize that that's a possibility. So many people are told and believe that once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. For some people, that is the case. But that's always going to be the case to somebody that believes that they're forever broken. You're not a slave to a fucking fluid. Are you serious? You're not born an addict. It's not a fucking... Even if you're genetically predisposed, you can still break that shit. <laughs> it's crazy. Can you talk about when you have one drink, it doesn't mean relapse? Absolutely. I love this stuff. Uh, I'm glad it's late night. I'm so stoked <laughs> to see you guys. Bro, I'm in a bad spot. Actually, you're in one of the best spots in the world because you're right here, man. I'm super proud of you. Check this out. So many people. So many people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up this analogy because I, I love saying this. If I gave you $100 for every single day you didn't drink alcohol, how much money would you have right now? Me, I, I'm, I'm over four years. So I don't know. 100, 100 and like 30,000, something like that. I have 130 grand, 140 grand, something like that. Some shit like that. So this cat, Brandon, what up, G-Funk? Is this, this cat recently put a video out and he's like, dude, five years, five. Hey, dude, since we're over 100 already, dude, I, will you pretty, we're going to play a game. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to burn this sage because we just passed 112, man, which means someone saw 111. 3,000 almost. That's amazing. Zero dollars. That's totally cool, too. 111, I saw it. Okay, I'm going to burn this sage. While I'm burning the sage, bringing in the good vibes, will you pretty please do us all the kindest of gestures and double tap the screen? Can we max that bar out and get this out to the FYP? Because what I'm about to say may be the exact words that someone needs to hear right now. And with your support, your help, we can help literally change the world and all you got to do is double tap the screen like 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 just get it done make magic man and i'm gonna bring in these good vibes here clockwise we are cleansing the room we are bringing in the good vibes good energy we are injecting this specific live with all of this happiness man and if you could pretty please either share this or double tap the screen and like it it all helps get this message to the right people at the right time i sincerely appreciate you thank you so much this burn is almost done, which means we're almost done with this. All right. I love this tradition. Thank you so much. Super good. Okay. We're going to tap this out. Thank you so much. I see 111 right there. That means we're all in alignment. It means that we're all in the right place at the exact right time. We are all focused on moving forward and I'm super proud of you. I'll share. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, so check this out. Remember my name. <laughs> Train of thought. What up? I can't believe you fucking took that shit. I can't believe you got the original train of thought on tiktok bro like that that's just that's I, i'm a little jelly <laughs> and maybe i am gonna go i'm gonna go steal the caboose of thought <laughs> what the fuck i'm ridiculous okay so check it out my phone is 11 percent. perfect let me get out some some magic before your phone dies come on dude we're done here we're done all right stop burning hold up okay so check this out so going back to the the sobriety concept if I paid you, if I gave you a hundred bucks for every day you didn't drink, how much money would you have? This cat went five years and then he had a drink and he put this video up and said, back to day one, <sighs> back to restarting. Now, if I said, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars for every day you didn't drink and on the days you did drink, you got to give me a hundred dollars back. Okay. What this means when we say we relapse and we're back to day one. What this means is this guy went five years. That's $182,000, $182,500 in sobriety. And because of that one day that he owes me 100 bucks, he's gonna give me $182,400 back. He's giving me everything. That's not a relapse. A relapse would be 
He has not stopped drinking since, and he's on the fucking long road to five years under the influence. Having a fucking drink is not a relapse. That, that's not, that makes absolutely no fucking sense. What the fuck happened to the rest of the time? The time was spent creating value in your life, and then something happened, and you acted as a human. You had a moment of vulnerability. There was a moment of weakness. Oh, we all have that shit. It's you, you, here's the thing. Here's the trip. So many people practice doing what they're familiar with, which is drowning their emotions out instead of practicing new healthy behaviors. This is called habitual thinking. I, I talk about this in module three and two. The reality with this, should I drink this weekend? Absolutely, dude. If you're doing it in a healthy way, man, don't drink to get drunk. That's not the point of alcohol. Don't drink to blackout. When you're blacking out, that's your mind literally shutting off because it's done everything it possibly could to save you, and now it's done. Don't drink to blackout. Don't drink to go crazy. You gotta keep in mind, healthy people drink. They just don't drink in excess. They don't drink at high risk. Oh my God, what up? That chick from TikTok. <laughs> What's up, girl? Drink water all day, every day. That's how real you keep uh, what you say. Thank you. Because uh, honestly, we keep it dirty in 100. And I'm gonna say this to you. Your emotions don't change the information. And I don't care how you feel about it because the truth is going to sting. Bing! It's going to hurt sometimes and you're welcome. Once you understand this stuff or practice reception, then you go, shit, you know what? It's not even about alcohol. It's about my processing. It's not even about sobriety. It's about my happiness. We fix and focus on the solutions. We focus on who you are, not what your problems are. Those don't matter. Those problems arise because of the way that you conduct yourself. And through no fault of your own, you've picked up these unhealthy habits from unhealthy situations. And now as you're trying to get or actively working on your health, you're trying to kick these bad habits that keep bringing you back. It's all up here, man. Your, your mind brings you happiness. Your mind, if your mind is powerful to bring you anxiety, then your mind is powerful enough to bring you sobriety. Facts. That needs to be a shirt. I started my program today. Thank you. Yeah, dude. I love that, man. Hang on. What is this? Would you be able to help my hubby? Absolutely. He's got to be willing to help himself, though. We can support those that are invested in themselves. I can't save anyone. I can't do the work for you. I can't think the thoughts for you. I can't drink the water for you. I can't share myself. I can't do the work. So I can help him help himself. I can support him as he saves himself because each one of us are the heroes of our journey. We're just acting like the villains. We gotta, we gotta stop doing that shit, man. I'm 45 days, holy shit. I'm my own worst enemy. We were just talking about that, 100%. And if you continue talking shit to you, you're gonna continue believing all those fucking things you say. <laughs> you're kicking your own ass because you're really good at it. Here's my thoughts on that. We, as humans, you do not need to kick your own ass. That's my job. That's everyone else's here job. We are here to fuck with your world. You were there to build a fucking empire. The world is here to fuck with your shit. You are here to live your life. Stop kicking your ass. That's what we're all here for. We'll make sure you, that you, you stay in alignment. We'll make sure you got these things handled. We'll make sure you check yourself. The reality with that is, is, is the stronger your foundation, the less what we say fucking matters. It doesn't, none of what we say matters. The only thing that matters is what you say. And if you're the best at talking shit to you, and you're listening, <laughs> that's why you're stuck or feel stuck. Two months sober, holy shit. That's like what? Six, six, six hundred, six down, 30, 63, six. That's six grand is sobriety. Uh, do you think drinking can be um, a compulsion instead of an addiction, especially with an anxiety disorder? Absolutely. We look at that as kind of like a, what an impulse. So an impulse item, like for instance, the things when you're, hey, what's up? When you're exiting like a grocery store, that line that you're in, all of those snicker bars and all that shit, 111, those are impulse items. <laughs> this is why we don't go shopping when we're hungry. <laughs> those things are like, well, it's just one. I wasn't thinking about it until it was right in my face. So when you have anxiety and you've programmed yourself to think about alcohol as the answer, that impulse is going to outweigh or overrun your logic. This is why we want to practice logic, matrix. <laughs> we want to practice the, we'll say, the analytical, at, uh, we want to practice practicality, basically. 
<laughs> we want to think in a healthy way. We want to do healthy things. 72 fucking hours? Holy shit. I drink when I'm bored. That's the number one kicker for everyone that drinks. I'm bored. I ain't got shit to do. Might as well pretend like I'm entertained. <laughs> I'm bored. But at least it's fun now. You're still bored. And the entertainment <laughs> is a lie. And then what happens is we get really good at loving the lie. And then as we get more and more and more bored, watch this. Listen to what I'm saying. I drink when I'm bored. But I feel good when I'm bored too because I'm drinking. Ah, might as well do nothing because when I get bored, I'll just drink. When I drink, at least I'm entertained, still doing nothing. Ah, I don't need to do shit because when I get bored, I'm just going to drink and entertain myself. Oh, I'm still, you see what I'm saying? It's this huge fucking loop. <laughs> Tammy, I need help. I'm here for you. So lots of different ways. You can scroll through my page and I'll answer all of your questions. Or you can come hang out with us inside Beyond Sober. There's an entire program. Every answer, every question you've ever fucking asked has been put in one location called the Beyond Sober program. I work with you for like 20 hours and then link you with one of the most powerful communities in the world. We all act as each other's sponsors. And it's not just about alcohol. It's about toxicity. Toxic thoughts, toxic people, toxic environments, all of that stuff. We think that because we went through school, we're good. We think that we've made money, we're good. We think that we're, we, we're in the gym, we're good. We're not. Because all of that success and all of that happiness easily gets diminished if we're having unhealthy thoughts that are helping us go back to old habits that don't help us move forward. Can I share you? You all day, every day. Share it out. Get it, get it, get it. Uh, Etc. My goal is four days. Get, check it out. And at four days, that's the last day alcohol is going to be in your system. 100%. $700. Fuck yeah, dude. Think about that. 700 bucks in sobriety, man. So far, I made it to three. Hang on. Now back to zero. We just had this conversation. You still have 200 bucks in sobriety. <laughs> what are you going to, you're going to give me all $300 because you decided to drink? That doesn't make sense. If I paid you $100, you made three hundred for every day you don't drink. I'm gonna give you hundred bucks. So you made it three days, and then on the fourth day or the third day you drink, and so now you're giving me all three hundred dollars. So you're back to zero in your account. The fuck are you talking about? That's exactly how you set yourself up for failure. More importantly, that's how you feel like a failure. That's how you feel like you're in a fucking loop. It's it's called a fix the loop mindset. Open your beautiful minds. And allow yourself to expand. That's what the community is for, is to help you realize how fucking far you actually are. You're right next to the fourth day with zero alcohol in your system. And now you think you're back to zero? You're, you're fucking your shit up. That's really what you're doing. You're kicking your own ass. And you don't have to do that because what you think isn't real. You just believe it is. So now you're upset. Might as well drink. That's a, that's a good enough reason to drink one more, right? Because you failed. What the fuck? This is what we've been taught. This is what we've been, we've been forced to believe. We've been forced through friends and family and movies and books and podcasts and all of this shit and commercials. Once an alcoholic, always a fucking alcoholic. You, you relapse, you're fucked. This is why everyone goes, don't listen to him. He's dangerous. You're right. I'm dangerously accurate with this information. <laughs> it's fucking truth, man. And the truth is in, in the pudding, and that pudding tastes fucking good. <laughs> Facts. The community is right there to go like, fuck yeah, I'm an ex. <laughs> I'm an ex-alcoholic. And people are proud of that information, knowing that they're not broken, they're just struggling. Right? That's what I told my mom. <laughs> I love it. Cody, I'm on death's door. Please tell me I will stop. I can't guarantee anything. I'm not in control of your mind, your body, your future, or nothing. I'll tell you this, if you keep doing what you're doing, you definitely won't stop. The fact that you're here and the fact that you're listening is absolute 100% proof that you can. But I can't say, I'm not showing up. I'm not kicking your door down. No one's coming. Nobody is coming to save you. Even if they did save you, you're still fucked. Just because you're out of the hole, it doesn't mean you can't, you have to, you don't continue climbing. You got to make moves or you get those fucking results. I know this because I died with that same fucking feeling. You got to put in the work. It, you're going to struggle no matter what. You're either going to struggle killing yourself or struggle saving yourself. It's the same struggle. Struggle forward. And we are here to support you on your journey to success, man. Be, stop being the villain of your story, man. You're the fucking hero. You got to start seeing that shit. 
Love your laugh. <laughs> I appreciate you. My, my hubby wants to change, but doesn't know how to change. It's not about change. It's about shifting. It's about transformation. Right? Guys who suckle <laughs> psychedelics, don't drink. Guys, I uh, gotcha. Day four. Dude, today's the last day. It's in, in your system. I'm so, so tomorrow, you and I have the exact same amount of drink in our system. Zero. Nathan Nada. Dude, healthy is the new cool, man. Can't We've been killing ourselves forever. Can't we just be healthy for a little bit? God damn. Is that really so much to ask? Do we re is our value really just the, the reflection of how much poison we could put in our system without dying? We get it. You're strong, dude. You don't have to drink that poison. You don't. It's, it's cool to be like a, a happy person. <laughs> uh, you scared me, bro. Thought you were a robot. That's awesome. I'm very programmed. I practice this. My delivery is on point. <laughs> Why do people always think it's a recording? People fucking are in my inbox and we're like, is this really you? Am I turning into like a Bezos? <laughs> like he looks fake as shit. Have you seen his face? Am I turning into like a Zuckerberg? Like I'm just robotic. Am I so good at delivering information that it's hard to believe that I'm a fucking human being? Because this isn't the first time that someone has said or indicated that <laughs> I, I'm not real. I'm not real. There's no way. Brandon, chocolate starfish. That's how real this shit is. No pun intended. Many puns intended. <laughs> nah, you're not, you're not some weirdo. I am a weirdo. Very much a weirdo. And what's interesting is someone just responded to one of my comments. Pika, what up, girl? <laughs> is is uh, happiness looks weird to a lot of people. And here's the trip. 111, happy people do weird shit. You know why? Because they actually have a personality that they enjoy expressing. I play, I'm doing the weirdest fucking shit you could ever possibly imagine. I'm in the gym going, I don't give a fuck how you feel. Look at me. Thanks. Now that I know you're, you want me to entertain you? I'm just going to do a bunch of stuff to make you feel like you don't have a personality. Because <laughs> that's what happiness looks like, dude. Your most authentic self. You don't care what other people think about you. Because you know that their opinion doesn't change or have any weight on who you actually are. And that comes with practice, right? So when you see someone doing some weird shit, I understand there's creepy weird, but then there's weird weird. <laughs> People that do weird shit are literally living their best lives. It's just not normalized. So we look at someone frolicking in a tutu Ace Ventura style down the fucking street and we go like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? When I'm like, dude, look at this motherfucker, happier as fuck, dude. He's so happy. Look at him. Look at that ice cream melting all over his face. He's fucking loving it. And we're all sitting here going, God damn, I wish I could be that happy. <laughs> Practice, man. Happiness is a, is a lifestyle. It's a reflection of health. <laughs> People that take care of their shit <laughs> ultimately find themselves in a fucking happy place. <laughs> I'm 22. I drink more than anyone I know. I don't know if I have a problem or not. Advice. If drinking more than everyone you know is three beers, I think you're pretty good. But if you mean drinking more than everyone you know is two bottles, we got an issue. Because look at it like this. Replace well, healthy people or people that drink in a healthy way. Don't have more than 10 drinks a week. That's still a lot. It, we, like if you, could, if you were consistent with that throughout the month. That's, that's still 40 drinks a month. Most people drink 40 weeks in a night. In a weekend, that's two 24s. Like, you see what I'm saying? That's 20 drinks. 40 drinks in an entire month. That's if they are binging. That's if they are fucking drinking in excess. Like a healthy person that's having an existential crisis <laughs> won't even reach 40 beers a month. 40 drinks a month. So we look at that and go, I could drink more than anybody I know. That means you're really good at consuming more poison than other people. That's what that means. This is why we want to practice drinking less alcohol so you can be a cheap date. You can get back to drinking healthy. How dope would it be if you could catch a buzz off one drink and max out at three? God damn. How much money would you save? <laughs> how many fights would you not get in? <laughs> how many hangovers would you not have? It doesn't mean that you black out and get drunk. That's not the point. The point is to... Loosen up, enjoy this, feel this, have a different kind of experience with the sauce in your system. That's what it's made for. Fuck, cook with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's so normalized to go like shotgun, fucking beer pong, everything 
has been turned into a drinking game. It's fucking funny, man. I've even turned this shit into a drinking game, but I'm, at least I'm drinking water, you know? Like, is 17 shots a day a lot? That's a bottle of alcohol a day. That's half of what I was drinking a day. That's a lot. That's fucking 750 plus milliliters. That's a lot of fucking alcohol. That would kill a regular person. Look, here's the test. Here's the test, right? So what's an alcoholic? Someone that has a physical and emotional addiction to the sauce, can't live without it, and their entire life is based around how much is in their system or how much is going to be in their system. The thought of not drinking gives them anxiety. That's another way of putting it. Here's the test. You guys want to know how severe your drinking is, if at all? Would you give the amount of alcohol that you drink to someone that is just starting? Let's just say your friend just turned 21 and they've never drank before. Can they drink what you drink and not black out? Or would they probably have alcohol poisoning? That's the test. <laughs> I know for a fact, if anybody were to drink a tenth of what I did, they would have alcohol poisoning if they've never had alcohol before. No, you would never do that. You would never do that. Hey, come here, girl. 100, 100 pounds, 98. Here, take these 17 shots. Your first time? Whoa! Dude, no. You know that that's unsafe. You look at, look at that. Think about that. For your first time, that they're a cheap date. They've got a healthy relationship to alcohol. You would never do that because it would probably kill them. <laughs> You're setting, you see what I'm saying, man? Like, we just want to be considerate. Now, think of yourself like that and go like, God damn, I would never give this to healthy me. I would never take 17 shots if this was my first time drinking, right? I don't know what to do. You got to practice drinking less alcohol. There's a link in my bio, a couple of different things. Obviously, there's Beyond Sober. Come join us. There's thousands of people in the program, hundreds of people online. And then more importantly, we've got this killer Marco Polo community that is just hilarious. Everyone's taking care of each other. It's amazing. But also, if you want to practice drinking less alcohol without the fear of withdrawals, click the link in my bio, take a look at single shot method, start practicing. And then as you watch that, as you go through that, I'll reach out to you later and give you time on my calendar. We'll chat about it. But the point is, is that if you do the same things, <laughs> you're going to get the same exact results, man. Period. Doesn't matter how you feel about it. You got to make moves. I need help from my hubby. Get him a membership. Give him access to the program. Once he's in the program, he's going to get the emails from me. He's going to jump on my calendar. I'm going to meet with him personally. He's going to meet the entire community. But he's got to want to do this shit. Worst case scenario is you jump into the program, unlock it for him, become a part of the community, and then you can help him. But the thing is, is if he's rejecting the solution, he's seeing it as a problem. He's not ready. Most people that are struggling aren't ready. Uh, what's your program? It's called Beyond Sober Program. So this, Beyond Sober, Cody, Beyond Sober, go to beyondsoberprogram.com or click the link in my bio and click on Beyond Sober. Everything you need is right there. You watch the video or, or take a look at the testimonials. I don't, whatever you want to do. The point is, is you got to invest in yourself, dude. If you're fucking serious and you can afford to kill yourself, excuse me, don't cancel me, TikTok. Hopefully these guys, I'm just, I'm just speaking, I'm thinking out loud. If you could afford to damage your health, you could afford to improve your quality of life. And that's what we're all here to do. Brandon, are you leaving us? Tell you what, man. <laughs> Good night, bro. Good to see you, man. I'm tipsy, tipsy watching this. I get you, man. The coolest part about what I say and how I say it is it doesn't matter if you're drinking or not because my words are still sinking into your cerebral. <laughs> and so because those words are there, what you, what you practice while you're drinking, you can master when you sober up. So the fact that you're here is proof that you care. Maybe I'm just an entertaining Polly Shore two hat wearing asshole. <laughs> You're still here, man. I appreciate you. Brandy, do your thing, man. But um, young and I'm like, I won't die yet. I said that same shit. And then I woke up dead. I literally woke up at 32 bright yellow and throwing up blood. Nobody's built fucking different. Nobody. Yes, I'm tipsy, but honestly, I'm not happy with myself. I got you. That's probably why you're still drinking. Um, <laughs> your words are so powerful. I love it. I appreciate you. They're powerful because you give them power. It's just words. Without you, it doesn't mean anything. So that's the power that you have. You're, you're feeling your own power. It's amazing. <laughs> Let me go through these questions real quick. Uh, hang on. Okay. How, would, uh, how many drinks are in a fifth? I'm not really sure. I'll have to look that up. I drink because I'm bored. Got you. Thank you. Um, 
What if we came from another life? That's a good question. We all did. This is my, what, second life that I'm aware of? Um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Are you a sponsor now? I, I sponsor thousands of people. Um, everybody in the Beyond Sober program acts as each other's sponsors. 14 months, and now it's getting hard. Damn! Life is happening, man. 14 months. That's, that's a year out. A year out, and now it's getting rough. Here's the thing. As you level up in life, you reach next level shit. Next level success gets next level problems. So the problems in the way that you feel right now, after a year out of removing the sauce from your system, this is the challenge to take you to the next level. You don't have to drink because it's not going to solve anything. You're stronger than that. Proof was, has been within the 14 months. That's fucking insane. This is why, like, what is it? Um, uh, bigger fish attract bigger sharks. <laughs> it's true. So if you are a big fish and you jump in the ocean, you're going to attract bigger sharks. So what makes an alcoholic? I answered that earlier. Thank you. Practice new habits, 100%. Once again, it, it comes down to if we do the same shit, we get the same fucking results. Thanks for answering my question. Absolutely, 100%. I do what I can with what I got. <laughs> That's bad. I'm glad I'm done drinking. I should uh, I should not know the answer. That's bad. I'm glad I'm done drinking. Where are you from, bro? I'm out here in Cali, uh, San Diego, right near the beach. <laughs> this man, I've married two for 15 years and I can't lose him. You can. You just really don't want to. <laughs> Tony, thank you so much. Hey, I'm trying to half-heart it with this kombucha. <laughs> yeah thank you so much i appreciate you here's the trip man um from a place of love we see people texas i don't smoke i i lived in texas for about two months austin actually this exact time last year i was in austin it was amazing so here's the trip man bay area hell yeah i used to dj out there if there's someone that you love who is struggling um and is either slightly aware of the struggle or you give many fucks. Here is the phrase that helps people struggling d check themselves. It doesn't work every time, but here's the phrase. Why stop drinking, bro? Because it's a fucking poison. And it'll kill you. I fear that if you continue drinking the way you do, you won't be around long enough for me to love you the way that you deserve. Or the way that you won't be around long enough for us to love you the way you deserve. We have to remember this. People that drink are highly emotional. They drink from an emotional place. They feel way more than we give them credit for. That's why they drink. It's to process all of those emotions. <laughs> it's just the more they drink, the less they're processing and the more comfortable they are with the intoxication. If I don't care, it must not matter. This is why drunk words cannot be fucking sober thoughts. Sometimes, because that person's rude at sober too. But the point with this is an alcoholic, someone that's struggling is actually, they know this. They know this. Once again, when you look at yourself and you go, would I give someone who doesn't have a problem this much alcohol? You would say no, hell no, never. Because people that drink this much alcohol have an issue. Alcohol creates all the problems that it solves. Got depression? Drink alcohol. Alcohol creates depression. Got anxiety? Drink alcohol. Alcohol amplifies anxiety. You just can't feel it. Is Wisco getting in the building? Oh shit, what up bro? <laughs> My hubby needs to talk to you. I get you, 100%. Here's, here's what I'm saying, man. Take a look at Beyond Sober, share it with him. 111, fuck yeah. <laughs> I love that you're all looking out for that shit too. Um, I do. I, I don't know what to do. You Once again, just sit him down. Be like, hey, hubby. <laughs> Here's what's up. You know I love you, right? Yeah, you do. <laughs> Here, I fear that if you continue drinking the way you do, you're not going to be around long enough for me to love you the way I want to. Or the way... You deserve. Alcohol is messing up my life. Alcohol is the fucking problem. You got to understand this. You're not the problem. He's not the problem. They're not the problem. Alcohol is the problem. You don't have, a, you're not the problem. You have a problem. He's not the problem. He has a problem. We all got fucking problems. <laughs> I got all kinds of shit I deal with. Even in my happiest, most successful place, I attract next level shit. And I got to deal with that, man. 
right? So what do I do? Hang on. Um, he knows that, but he doesn't know how to stop. Well, I'm telling you this. You got to share singleshotmethod.com. If he's ready to practice drinking less alcohol, I'm telling you, man, like here's the coolest part. I work with people every single day that have a significant other. Homegirl's actually getting married soon and she's practicing drinking less alcohol so she could be a healthy version of herself for their honeymoon. Amazing. The healthier she becomes, the more she can support him. That's why Beyond Sober is not just about alcohol. It's about toxicity of the mind, about habits, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we process. If we can put ourselves, or when we put ourselves in a healthy place, we process all of our actions in a healthy way and make better decisions. Decisions that last a lifetime. Because the only thing, the only way an alcoholic can become an ex-alcoholic is if they transform into someone different. You can't be the same exact person and expect different results. You have to practice new behaviors and transform into a better version of yourself. A version of you that doesn't want alcohol. A version of you that doesn't think about alcohol every fucking moment. Who will I be? Who knows? That's the exciting part. You can't, this is gonna sound cliche as fuck, you can be whoever the fuck you want to be. But if you keep doing the same shit, you're going to continue being the person you don't want to be. <laughs> you keep drinking, you keep doing this shit, and you're like, I hate me. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. And this sucks. And I'm fucking, I'm so tired of me and all that shit. And you're doing nothing different. So you're getting no new results. You don't even know what you like until you like it. You didn't know you were that fucking intelligent until you were given that question. You didn't know you were that fucking strong until you were given that challenge. You didn't realize you were into fucking grooming pets until you sobered up and had to take care of your friend's dog now that they finally fucking trust you. <laughs> the thing with this shit is the only thing you know, which is one of the main things that we need to know, is what we don't like. You, so many of us have been fucking preconditioned to think you have to know what you want. Fuck that. All I need to know is what I don't want. And so I work in the opposite direction. Any direction that isn't towards the thing I don't like is the right direction. <laughs> you just keep moving that direction. And then on your journey, you go, shit, I kind of like wearing all black. What? I like wearing two hats. I didn't know kombucha was my fucking flavor. I love that color. That's kind of my jam. If you stay the same person, you're going to fucking feel exactly the same. This is also why so many fucking people in AA get pissed at me. Because they're the same exact person. They have a problem before AA. They're an alcoholic or whatever. That's who they are. They go into AA. They're still an alcoholic. Then they leave AA and they're still an alcoholic. Minus the alcohol. They're the same fucking person. And they practice being the same person. Minus the alcohol. Which means you are equally capable of kicking your own ass. Again. If you focus on the transformation. When you focus on the transformation. You kick all of those things and become someone you enjoy being. And the coolest part about being the strongest version of yourself is you're not tempted, or if you are, you're strong enough to fucking turn left. You go for the water because you care about you and you love living a healthy life. You love happiness. So you're not happy because you're sober. You are sober because you're happy. Happy people don't jeopardize their fucking happiness with poisons and other toxic shit. It just doesn't fucking happen. Period. That's why Beyond Sober focuses so much on who you are, not what your problem is. Right? I've been sober for a long and I'm loving my life. Proof. <laughs> See what I'm saying? And the further into your happiness, the, fur the more you love your life, the less you even, you can walk down the fucking alcohol aisle. You can go to those events. You can do all that shit. You don't have to worry about, is there alcohol in this kombucha? Is it fucking fermented? Can I, ha can I, be can I smell it? Homie is like, dude, how, how do you transform into someone that doesn't crave alcohol? When you're so deep in the sauce, you can't imagine not being that person because you've identified your entire life as the person that's broken. You're not broken, dude. You're healing. But if you keep finding reasons why you're still an alcoholic, you're always going to be an alcoholic and you're always going to feel forever fucked. 
Help, please. I'm so depressed. I get you, man. Alcohol is keeping you there. Three years sober, and I've never operated at this level. 100% worth it. Fucking right? Isn't that amazing, dude? Like, these aren't paid advertisements. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> All y'all are just like, dude, I love living a happy life, man. I love just fucking being who I am and allowing my mind to roam and explore and create joy and do these things right? You can experience life in any way you want. And the further into your happiness you go, the more you realize who you want to be and the closer you become to yourself and the more authentic you are. That's the point of life to figure out who you are, right? So many people go, I don't know who I'll be without alcohol. Good. Once you've lost everything, alcohol, you're free to do anything. This is your chance to design a life you love to fucking live. Just takes practice. You're amazing. I appreciate you. <laughs> You're amazing. You're here, man. I'm at 308. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I've realized that if I don't get rid of some toxic people in my life, I might not stop. That's a beautiful, beautiful um, um, observation. <laughs> I'm telling you, I haven't talked to my dad in like 12 years. I, I, I literally had a 12 year. I didn't talk to my little sister for 10 years. Uh, I rarely, I rarely talk to anybody. Those are the most toxic people. My block list is probably close to 10,000 people. I block bitches all fucking day long. Fuck all of them. Toxic is toxic. I don't give a fuck. I don't owe you anything. You don't owe me anything either. You don't have to be in my life. You're not the only fucking person around. There's 8 billion of us. Who are you? <laughs> if we're not contributing to each other's world, then we're just stealing joy from each other. Fuck that. Uh, Cody, you to bomb. I need to catch some Z's. Hey, get your thing. I, I get your thing. Do your thing. <laughs> I appreciate you. I didn't even meet my dad till I was 26. Holy shit. LaFleur, what up? Uh, yep, it's my family members that are toxic. Dude, it fucking sucks, man. Trust me, man. There are, there are members, amazing people in the community that... Uh, we're actively talking about the toxicity in their family. It sucks, man. It's difficult. Blocked. <laughs> I've blocked so many of my fucking family members, dude. Nobody was even there when I was dying. My family didn't show up. They knew. They didn't do anything. I could have died there. And they wouldn't have been, They weren't there. They weren't fucking there. They didn't even take it seriously. They don't even take my success seriously. They weren't fucking there when I was dying. When I was at my worst, you didn't even show up. You didn't even call the fucking hospital. What, what is it that I owe you again? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? We're your family. <laughs> family is who you choose. Blood is thicker than water, but there's more to that. Blood is thicker than water, but there's the, the rest of that phrase indicates, which we've never been told, is that you choose your family. 100%, man. So we got to look at these things, man, and go like, look, I want to be some, I want to be so healthy and so abundant and so empathetic and, and gracious and respectful and honest and authentic that people go, how is that even possible? How does somebody do that, man? Okay, Dominic. <laughs> Get your two hats out of here, Dominic. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm drowning. The interesting part about drowning is you can fucking still tread water. The reason why we drown is because we, we've been treading water for so long. We're just fucking done. We're exhausted. We're tired. This is where support comes in. So many of us have practiced not reaching out for support because we think we got it. You're not built different. Everybody needs support. Everybody wants support, but not everybody is comfortable reaching for support. Even hyper-independent human beings. Here, let me help you. No, I got it. Say that long enough and you're going to say it at the wrong time. No, I got it. No, you fucking don't. I could see you struggling. No, I'm cool. No, you're not. You're lying to me. I got this. You think you got it. I'm watching you drown. Grab the thing. <laughs> right? If you don't fucking reach, you stay put. You stay put. I love your laugh. <laughs> I'm good. I'm fine. You know what fine stands for? F-I-N-E. Freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. I don't listen to anybody that says they're fine. I'm fine. No, you're fucking not because you just said that shit. Who are you trying to convince? <laughs> <Bru> <laughs> right? Don't trust them, though. 
um, don't want their help. There's certain people that want to help you so they feel valued. Then there's other people that support you because that's in their nature. You don't need to feel valued to lend a hand. It's like the puppy is drowning, dude. Go fucking save it. Like it, you see, like you, you, you see what I'm saying? You, you open the door for someone because why not? Like, what the fuck? I see you. <laughs> I see you running. I'm going to hold the door open for you. Decent human beings do that shit. I don't expect anything in return. I just bought my lady flowers. I didn't even expect her to recognize them. <laughs> I just did, do nice things. Support people. We all fucking need it. Y'all, here's the thing, though. The people that give the biggest hugs are the ones that need it the most. The people that know how to really embrace you are the ones that never were embraced the ways that they truly wanted. This is why if a kid is ever hugging you, never let go first. A kid will hug until they get what they need. That's me. So I need it the most. You see what I'm saying? But the thing is, is we practice. We think we're alone. We, we practice this loneliness. We practice punishing ourselves. We practice finding reasons why we deserve nothing. And so we generate the results we think we deserve. You think you deserve shit? That explains why you're eating that shit. <laughs> it's treat people the way you want to be treated. I feel this. 100%, dude. 100%. Wisco, I was in your live earlier. I fucking get, send you all kinds of gifts. Because I love when people send them to me. So I'm going to reciprocate. Do the same shit. Doesn't mean I expect it from you. That doesn't. That's not the point. The point is, is that people showing, nobody has to do anything. There's no obligation. There's nobody forcing us to do anything. So we look at these things. Hugs. <laughs> Catherine, what's up? Don't take it. I wasn't like reaching out. What I'm saying with this is that that's a beautiful thing. Like through no, no obligation. You're like, that's a rose is the same as opening a door for somebody. I see you. I recognize you. I appreciate you. Dope. Thank you. It's a little tiny fucking thing that generates a massive feeling. Some people just need to be recognized for a fucking minute. Give them five seconds. It changes the world. <laughs> we just don't practice that shit. Because we think we got to film all the good deeds we're doing instead of just doing good shit. God damn. Hey, hey. What up, Bar Barbie? What's going on? So good to see you. Truth. We look at this like this. is It's, it's from this concept of... Confident people don't need to convince you that they're confident because they're too busy being confident. Nice people don't need to tell you that they're nice because they are fucking too busy being nice. You recognize that in other human beings and you attract like-minded humans. This is why we see ourselves in other people. That's why there's so many amazing people in the program and, and that I get the privilege of hanging out with is because we've all been there. We are more similar than we are different. And so we get a chance to practice these things and grow. I don't do things out of obligation. I just want to give the love, love, love because it jumps out of me 100%. That's your, that's your source. That's your core. You're built from love. And then you, you're practicing that expression. It feels natural to you. you don't, we don't do things to expect things in return. We, we could do a bunch of shit. Now there comes a point when you've given so much of yourself and literally zero reciprocation. And because your efforts are literally devalued, we got to hang on to that shit. Nah, bro. I've helped you a thousand times and you're still the same asshole. <laughs> right? There's only so much of this I'm willing to give you before you need to recognize my efforts. If you don't recognize my efforts, <laughs> it's like talking to a wall. Why do I keep helping the thing that doesn't want my support? Sad thing I got the message too late to save my family. It hurts. Recovering is hard right now. I'm with you, man. Ram? Ram? Ram ham? <laughs> cool name, bro. Uh, I'm with you, man. You gotta keep in mind, life happens. And had the circumstances been different, you would have had a, a better opportunity to do what you would do. But it didn't work out in your favor, and that's not your fault at all. Circumstances, things have to line up perfectly. The fact that I'm alive is the perfect alignment of so many different things, dude. Yes, I have a big heart. Don't take advantage. <laughs> I'm with you, man. Um, I love to help people and I like giving to people, but be careful because uh, there's people that will take and take 100%. Absolutely. This is why I don't say positive shit. <laughs> Fuck positivity. You got to practice optimism. Here's the thing, man. Band-aids on broken arms. So many people think that they could press and press and press and press and push and pull and all this stuff and then finally give out. And then when that happens, 
they will be saved. I'm not going to save you next time. I'm not going to save you this time. But I'll support you while you save yourself. Bro, what's up, mermaid? <laughs> it's merman. <laughs> I'm glad I found you. I'm glad you found you. 100%. You got to keep in mind, you're seeing yourself in me. You're recognizing you right now. I'm just saying all the things you already know. This is not new information. You know this. That's why it's easy for you to nod. You're probably not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This fucking guy. <laughs> I'm not special. <laughs> I just know how to communicate the deepest, darkest thoughts. <laughs> but working with and from love amplifies it. It's an energy that flows through us 100%. It's a reflection. It's a source. It's core. Right? This is why the way I communicate, this is why everyone goes, dude, your energy, your light, your, your fucking all this stuff. It's, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. It's who I am in my core. You see it. I'm not even trying to show you. You're seeing through all of this and generating this fucking image and then having a full on reaction, a full on conversation with yourself going, that's a decent human. I, I'm welcome. I, I <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But this is, yes, I'm nodding. See, you see what I'm saying? That's, here's, I know. <laughs> That's the thing. I love when people nod. Why am I nodding? I told you this shit. Actually, I, I've been in um, communication for over 20 years. And one of the things that I talk about is the nod. <laughs> when you say things, thank you for the love. When you say things in such a way that all people have to do is nod, it's another way of saying, tell them what they're thinking. Because so many people don't practice the execution of thought. They could think but they don't get those thoughts out of their head. So when you say things in such a way that all they have to do is, yep, 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 that's where connections come from. Dude, when people talk, it's so important to not. You wanna recognize that you're, you're absorbing the information. Like, so when I communicate, I, I, from a, there's a place of reception. We don't always want to uh, listen to respond. There are things that people just need to say, they don't need a response. And if you give people enough time and space, they'll say everything that they need. And sometimes just creating the space for people to say what's on their mind is enough for them to come to their own conclusions. Why All day I say things and I'm like, yeah, active listening, 100%, right? So that place of listening, man, is a place of reception. You could, you, and here's the trip. Hey, thank you so much for the love, is what you hear is a reflection of what you know and what you feel. This is why it's so insanely important to work on you and be selfish for a little bit. Because someone might be saying something to you that you just literally cannot hear. You can't hear this shit. Sai, I'm detoxing. Good, I'm so proud of you. It's amazing, drink your water, get that shit. Yes, that's right there, one of the cores of person's uh, centered care, 100%. We could be anywhere in the world, but we're here. <laughs> You're in my cheekies. <laughs> 100%, man. You could be anywhere in the world. You could be doing anything. Had one fucking conversation gone a different direction, you wouldn't be here. And so you look at these things and go, if I'm choosing to be here and what I'm receiving is, is good for me, this is a good decision. How much water? Half your body weight in ounces. So I drink like 90 ounces, <laughs> roughly a day. Uh, what makes what makes one stop drinking? What? She's tripping. <laughs> what makes one stop drinking? What's the answer? You're the answer. Do you enjoy being the person that you are? Yeah, cool. Do what you do. Are you done with you? Are you tired of being this person? Cool. Make moves. Like there's no alcohol is a poison. It's a it's a poison. You can consume poisons. We can consume chemicals and not die. The point is, is do you need, do you want this poison in your life? Or no. Most of the time, the poison causes all of the problems we're trying to solve. <laughs> right? It's all in you to change. It's not even about change. It's about transformation. Look. Let's see if I can do this. Change. <laughs> now it's kombucha. Whoa. Water. Change to water. It's not about that. It's about this. <laughs> transformation, right? It takes time. <laughs> it's not about change. It's about shifting, okay? So many people, can I try and sleep? Awesome. Water, 
It is a mood enhancer. It's going to help you get sleep. Where there's sleep, that's when your body heals. Practice going to sleep early, earlier. Take care of you. I'm super proud of you. You went from binge drinking every Friday night and Saturday to stopping at three because uh, of your videos. Holy shit. That's amazing. God damn it. My cheeks hurt. <laughs> Where do you get your energy? Water. When you live a happy life and you love to be awake, you generate all the energy you need. With that said, I also go to the gym. I feed my machine good food. I drink water. Um, I get an appropriate amount of sleep. I fucking love being awake. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Water, sleep, and food. That's it. I was told you help with counseling. Um, counseling is different. Coaching is a whole different game. Uh, mood enhancer, water, yeah, 100%. So, uh, counseling, we have sobriety coaches. Wisco Kid's in here. He's our lead sobriety coach. I am a master coach, which means I teach the primary fundamentals of exponential growth. So, that's why Beyond Sober, there's, you work with me online, but then you work with the coaches. They have their own programs, Elevated and Beyond, where we even have grief coaches <laughs> for the breakup process with alcohol. Also, if you've lost someone or you're going through certain types of grief, or someone you know might be dying soon, you could grieve early, so the passing of them is, is more bearable. But the point of that is that beyond sober, all of us act as each other's sponsors. All of us act as uh, uh, a shoulder, not just to cry on, but to literally thrive with and grow with. Because we are more similar than we are different. There are certain humans, such as myself, Wisco Kids, Sarah, and Samantha, that have been doing this for a long time, that we're just further down the road, and we could recognize what's working and what's not working with certain people. So we offer our time personally. But you gotta take that seriously. So when it comes to the information that you want, 99.9% .9 of that data is in the program itself as it sits without any support, without any community, you can get all the results. <laughs> you just got to invest in yourself. You've got to take you seriously. If you're willing to buy a shirt, then you're willing to invest in yourself. That's really it. Three years sober in March. Holy shit. I did that with my grandmother. That's amazing. Wow. That's so cool. I appreciate your videos, man. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Sincerely appreciate you, bro. Uh, I've been told to join this program. I love that. <laughs> Thousands of people have been told to join the program. We, have, we, we just have... The community is insane, man. Aaron just joined. Just now! Aaron just joined Beyond Sober Community. <laughs> what up, dude? I'm so stoked. He's not even here. Like, he just jumped into the polo community. I'm so fucking stoked. <laughs> What's up, Aaron? And so now... Um, we get a chance to introduce Aaron to the community, man. There's tons of us over there. Everybody's like, Lance, yeah, bro. Lance is a part of the community. Um, Michelle's a part of the community. Wisco's a part of the community. Um, who else is in here? Pika, right? Um, dude, so it, it's just amazing. Um, what's the difference between your program and AA? AA, you're going to sit in a room and trauma bond with a bunch of people and tell war stories, and they're going to focus on your problems and make you do 12 steps and convert to a religion. Beyond Sober is about the transformation starting with your mind. It is about the evolution of self, removing toxicity. Everything that AA does not even think about is what we touch on. Beyond Sober is reaching a place beyond sobriety, which is extreme happiness. We focus on improving your quality of life, not getting you to stop drinking alcohol. As you improve your quality of life, you drink less because you love your life so much. The difference is the community is there to push you forward, not give you a place to talk about your problems. No one gives a fuck. You don't even give a fuck about your own problems. They're just bugging the shit out of you. We spend zero attention on the problem and all of our attention on your progress. We all want to see you win because we want to see you do it better than all of us. And we all have the tools to help you take it to the next level so we can grow through your success. You, it, there's nothing like this on the fucking planet, period. That's, that's, just, the, that's just the basic community. Then you have the Discord. <laughs> Ton, hundreds, hundreds of people that are not only in the program but are active over there in the Discord community. You meet friends, man, real people that are encouraging you every fucking step of the way with the resources, with the tools. 
You're watching people in the fucking gym literally sweat and, and get so, and, and practice their sobriety, man. You're watching people literally transform. You're watching people just turn in to humans that they never thought that they would be. You want to feel unstoppable? God damn. Imagine being surrounded by hundreds of people that want to see you healthy. That all are encouraging you to reach the fucking top, man. That's the beauty of it. That's the only way it fucking works. And you don't even have to leave your house. You get to put us in your pocket. <laughs> Go to the beach. Put me in your ear holes. Make magic happen. That's the point of it, man. Yes, I love the program. It really works. It only works because you work. <laughs> you show up. You make magic. You share yourself. You kill it. Opinions on once daily. Um, dude, it's a medicine. If it's helping you function, do it. But if you're, if you're using, like anything can be done incorrectly, including drinking water. Uh, how much is a Cody hug? You got it right here. It's free of charge. <laughs> I, got, I got tons of them. You're good. <laughs> I want to stop, but I can't. I believe you. And you know why you can't? It's because you keep using that word can't. You can, you just haven't yet. You've tried, but you've, you haven't done it the right way that works for you. You totally can. You're not the fucking anomaly. You are not the only person that can't fucking find happiness. You're not the only person that can't stop drinking alcohol. Dude, you can 100%. You've survived every single fucking thing that's ever happened to you. Everything. Everything. You've survived all of it. You've thrived through all of it. If, uh, everything. And you can't fucking survive a fluid? What are you talking about? Did someone convince you that you're powerless to a poison? What the fuck? You're an unstoppable quantum beast with an issue. What? Well, let's get you moving. <laughs> hey, Cody, thank you for your supportive videos. Oh, you're so welcome. I sincerely appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Dude, that's so, that's so magic, man. I sincerely appreciate it. The reality with this is, is there's so many of us that have been trained... I'm honestly starting to think that alcoholism is a fucking like a conspiracy plot because the reality is, is the more people have a problem, the more money the industry is going to make because th I really want you to think about this. Why is it that gas stations and liquor stores were some of the only, oh shit, Darlene, hell yeah, welcome to the program, Darlene, I'm so stoked for you, just got the notification, she's on step one. Which, well, technically step two. The next step is she's going to book on my calendar and we're going to pick a time. So I get to meet with Darlene. I'm so stoked. <laughs> I get to meet with Darlene. As soon as she picks a time on my calendar, that's going to automatically send her over to the Marco Polo community and we get a chance to fucking meet Darlene. I love that name, by the way. What's up, Darlene? <laughs> I like you. You got one of them personalities. That's cute. <laughs> oh my God, dude. That's so dope. I love this shit. If anybody else is interested in following Darlene Delayed, click the link in my bio. Take a look at Beyond Sober Program. Look at the testimonials, man. Maybe there's something that somebody said in one of the sections of the program that hits you at home. It's you right here. And you're like, you know what? This is for me. Because here's the reality, man. It's not for everyone, but it is for the right people. And there's a lot of right people. It's not some court-ordered fucking bullshit thing that you have to fucking do. How do I get Marco? I downloaded the app. Oh, go into module one and, and click on introduction. So go into acceptance, click on introduction, and right there it says Marco Polo. Click on that. Um, or I think you can search for Beyond Sober Community, I think. But you gotta you got you got take a look. Uh, can you finish the gas station story? Um, where was I going with that? Yes, the gas station story. What was I saying? See my ADHD. <laughs> I'm a drug addict. Should I feel wrong for trying um, to from drinking responsibly? No. What are you talking about? Should you feel bad for taking care of yourself? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, that's epic. Dude, take care of you. You shouldn't feel bad for any of that shit. Okay, look. If you're in a place of addiction, which there's a lot of people that are, you got to keep in mind, that's the issue. You're not the problem. You, all that shit can be shifted with practice. Gas station and liquor store. Oh, yes. Thank you for that. I was like, was I saying something different? Here's the thing, man. If, if it wasn't a conspiracy, if it wasn't like strategically designed, you got to remember this. In a pandemic, one of the only fucking places that are open is 
a liquor store? I know you're dying. You're not allowed to go outside. But if you need to go outside, make sure you stock up on a poison. Do you know how many new alcoholics there are? Like, I'm talking about so many people that I meet with every single week go, I didn't have this problem until, what's it called? Until the pandemic hit. Until it was quarantined. Until I was stuck at home. Until I couldn't leave. Until I, I got bored. Well, I'm bored because we can't even have friends over. What do you think? Look at my last statement. Um, he's not seeing it. What are you talking about? Going up, scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up. Liquor stores beat open through pandemic. Oh shit, Michelle, what's up girl? Hey, welcome to the program. You're on step one or two, <laughs> one. You're on step one. I'm so stoked. Only a few more steps and you're gonna be up in the Beyond Sober community. Fuck yeah. I'm so excited for you. Fuck, okay, there it is. Okay, you're gonna pick a time on my calendar right now and then we're gonna chat. We're gonna have a conversation and I'm gonna build a blueprint for you. I'm gonna show you exactly what you gotta do in the program. I'm gonna introduce you to the community. We're gonna map out your, your step-by-step -step to happiness, sobriety, longevity, and all of these amazing things. Um, I'm super duper duper stoked to have you as a part, of, uh, a part of the Beyond Sober community, man. I'm so fucking excited. Michelle, you're amazing. There's other Michelles. Where, where'd the other Michelle go? Is she asleep? Is she practicing sleeping? Hang on, I did find that common. Uh, liquor stores being open through pandemic was one of the biggest harm reduction acts ever. Fucking true. Absolutely true. <laughs> Nodding. <laughs> chicken, chicken, yeah! What up, gangsters? Dude, bro, uh, I love how excited you get for those who take that first step to changing their lives. Dude, I love seeing people win, man. I love seeing people win. And here's here's part of this. <laughs> it's contagious. My cheeks hurt. God damn it. Lance, we got some introductions to do. I tell you what, Darlene and Michelle. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you this, man. Let me see. Let me just be. How do I stay off of alcohol? Do you have problems getting on to alcohol or just staying off? It sounds like you can stop. I'm going to get into it. Anyway, let me talk about this before I get lost. If you got a problem with alcohol, <laughs> the solution is with the link in my bio. Two people just joined the Beyond Sober community, and I'm stoked. We are going to focus on helping them transform into the best version of themselves, not dabbling in the sauce, and enjoying their fucking life. When you love the life you live, you would never consider damaging that or jeopardizing that with alcohol. It's easy to stay sober when you love being alive. Facts. Okay, so check this out. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, I remember. Okay, ADHD, y'all. I'm telling you this shit. Hopefully, I'm entertaining. <laughs> I was supposed to make an appointment. Yeah, dude. You didn't know this? What are you talking about? You didn't know you can make an appointment with me? I'll have to send it. Reach out. To okay, there it is. She just booked a meeting. Who is this? I don't know who this is. Hang on. We're coming back. There <laughs> okay, so now they're jumping into the community. They just booked on my calendar, which means they get a chance to meet me. I get a chance to hear swap stories. And then they're going to jump into the Marco Polo community. I love watching this. So let me go back to why I get so excited for people to take action. It's not some fucking marketing ploy, dude. It's not some shit. Oh, my God. Let's get excited. I'm fucking genuinely, genuinely stoked for people to do shit better than me. For people to just, you have no idea how magical life is when you're at this place of connection and oneness and, and openness and authenticity and vibrancy. And so to know that someone goes, I, I fucking care about me, dude. I care about my future. I actually give a fuck about this machine. I care about my health, man. Even a small step goes a long way. And part of the reason I'm so passionate with that is because nobody was there to cheer me on when I started making moves. Listen to what I'm saying. My journey through sobriety to becoming this person has been by myself. Nobody, no friends, no family, nothing. There was nobody there for me ever at any fucking point. Yes, there was family I was around, but they were not a part of my struggle. They have their own lives. They do their own shit. I built all of my businesses and created all of my success all by myself. Nobody to share it with. Zero. No encouragement. Nicole just got in. Woo! She's in the community. Fuck yeah! That's why I'm excited. 
is because, dude, I wish. The reason why Beyond Sober is so fucking powerful is because it's built from a place that didn't exist when I fucking needed it. God damn it, dude. I'd have, I would have I would have stopped drinking had there been these fucking steps. Had the community been here, had the resources been here, had something like this existed when I was at my fucking lowest, I would have found success in, in my sobriety. But it wasn't. There was nothing out there. Nothing. And then I looked at AA, I looked at all this other shit, and I was like, we got to do it better. We got to do it fucking way better. And then you guys ask for it. Hey, man, what do we do? How do I do this? How do I stop? Well, let me show you. And then I fucking built it. Also, by myself. Yes, I shared a little bit of success with you guys. But the reality with this is that I built it by myself. I was on my own. <laughs> I was still creating TikToks. I'm still helping people grow. I'm still helping people do these things. And then now that Beyond Sober is here, it's in fruition. Everybody that I've had a chance to connect with over the last year has contributed to its success. It's only successful because you give a fuck about yourself. My man, you had family to support you. I had people to provide food and shelter and minimal support. That's it. The journey was mine. It's mine alone. It's the same with your journey is your journey. The difference is with Beyond Sober, you're never by yourself. You've always got people at pretty much 24 hours. You got a problem? You got an issue? Cool. Let's talk about it. You need support? You need coaching? Cool. Let's get you one. You need some something specific? Cool. Let's work on that shit. You just want to have a conversation with somebody, event for a little bit? Cool. There's hundreds of us that are willing to listen. That is the fucking power of Beyond Sober, dude. More people are Beyond Sober than they are working on their sobriety. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> So I say that, man. I say this all with passion. And by myself, I need your help. Good. Jump in the community, dude. Check it out. So hang on. Beer man. Beer man's wife. <laughs> I love that, by the way. Take a look at the link in my bio. Dead serious. Cody just fucking requested me on Facebook. He just joined the program, too. Together, we are code I. <laughs> so look, if you, need some, if you need help, you want help, you want support, you got to keep in mind, if you do not invest in yourself, I'm not here to save you. I can't do the work for you. You've got to become a part of the community that's helping each other. Or, if, like, once again, if finances are the issue, scroll to the bottom of the page and fill out a sponsorship form. Someone just donated a couple seats today. That's how powerful it is. People go, I want to buy seats for other people. Cool, man. I look just like Polly Shore. <laughs> I believe that. Um, <laughs> come apart. I've been so good and I lost myself. That's good. I love that you lost yourself. Once you've lost everything, you're free to do anything, which means you are free to design whichever person you truly want to be. You're in one of the best places. I'm 17. Can I start the program? Absolutely. There's nothing stopping you. Can you buy a shirt? Can you go on Amazon? Can you do that stuff? Absolutely. There is nothing stopping you. Actually, as a matter of fact, at 17, the fact that you're even interested and working on yourself and improving your quality of life is setting you up for a lifetime of success, man. God damn. You got a 15-year head start <laughs> from when I started giving a shit. Love that quote. Bones. <laughs> That's Fight Club, man. That's Tyler Durden right there. Once you've lost everything, you're free to do anything. I was 16 a bit ago and was chilling in the lives. Oh, word. Yeah, dude. That's dope. Hell yeah. Um, if I had this at 17, oh my God. Right? Fucking shit. At 17, I wouldn't have taken any of this, this stuff seriously. Now, because that was the 90s, man. That was before internet and shit. I think we had dial up at that time. Mm, mm, mm. I was 2000, 17? 2000. I was 18 in 2000, I think. <laughs> um, his name was Robert Poulsen. <laughs> One of my, that's my favorite movie. His name was Robert Poulsen. <laughs> oh it's so good man um i have a real relationship so i want to be my better self uh for her because i'm a piece of shit i believe you are because you said it i wasn't thinking it now you put that thought in my head so i have no other fucking way to think i'm not gonna try and prove you wrong you could have said because i'm a fucking piece of gold and i've been like i that's awesome but you decided to fucking throw out piece of shit no one knew that until you said it this is why we don't point out the things we don't like we let other people figure that shit out. And if you keep calling yourself a piece of shit, you'll find reasons why you are. You believe that. 
So you do piece of shit things to prove yourself correct. The second you start saying you're a piece of ass, <laughs> you start doing things to prove that you're worth whatever ass is to you. <laughs> I, I crack myself up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, man? You are what you say you are. I'm fucking unstoppable. I prove that every single fucking day. I'm also insanely happy. I prove that to myself every single fucking day. I sometimes feel like a piece of shit because I'm judging myself because I think that's what they think. So I say that and hope that they nod so they'll tell me how they really feel. Darlene, just join the community. Fuck you! Yeah! God damn it. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. You see? You see? You put in the work, man. You set it up. Make it easy. Make it easy. Jump in. Have fun. Dude, that's, that's it, man. Yeah, I'm so stoked. I'll drink to that. This is kombucha. <laughs> uh, you're still at past your bedtime yeah you know this <laughs> hey from new york my cheeks are killing me i can go without alcohol for long periods of time but once i start drinking i could drink for days that's uh i call that a pro binger a professional binger um that's good because uh, it's not good it's just where i'm going with that is the fact that you cannot drink and be cool that's awesome there's a lot of people that struggle every single day and must drink. Six days sober, holy shit. I just bought your program. Sherry, fuck yeah, dude. I'm so stoked. I'm so excited for you. So was that Darlene or was that Michelle? <laughs> Did you jump in? Or was this the other day? I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> I'm drinking problem, drink more A drinking problem, just drink more water. It's not just drink more water. You gotta keep in mind. If you're drinking a ton of alcohol and drinking a ton of water, all of that alcohol still has to go through your liver. You're still fucking your shit up. Three days sober, drinking water, son. Get, I'll drink to that. Get it, get it. Let's drink. That's epic, dude. Check it out. Tomorrow is the last day that alcohol is going to be in your system. And I don't mean like forever. I mean like the poison is officially out of your body. In like 24 hours. Holy shit, it's like Disneyland. <laughs> Can you imagine who you're gonna be with zero alcohol, zero poison in your body? I don't even know. That's amazing. That's fucking crazy. You think about that and you go like, damn, to, that's a cause for celebration. I'll drink water to that. Fuck yeah. Thank you, Samantha. <laughs> drink water, eat water, breathe water, think water, swim in water, be water. Like water, y'all. I, my, I, my whole philosophy is be like water. That's, that's Bruce Lee. Be like water can flow or it can crash, right? Just depends on how it is, man. Water is the fucking nectar of life, man. <laughs> I want to be sober, uh, but really hard to stop. I love that you said that. It is. It is hard to stop. Um, and you want to be sober instead of I need to. You will, whatever you want, you'll get. Excuse me. The way you achieve something that you want or the way you get your hands on something that you want is different from when you need something. I need to be sober. Well, you, it sounds desperate. You want to be sober. That's a place of progression. That's a place of decision. That's a place of power. I want that. I want ice cream. I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> I need ice cream. Let's go now. Totally different vibe. I want to be sober, but I just cannot get myself there. I went five years without. What? You already got yourself there before? <laughs> you know beyond any scientific doubt that you got way more than what it takes. Five years? Fucking shit. People are struggling on five days. You made it five years? That's absolutely fucking phenomenal. My daughter said to me, you didn't drink while pregnant. How come you can't quit now? No. <laughs> it's because you're not inside my body. <laughs> Don't cancel me, TikTok. These are facts. The reason there's a, it's really fucking easy um, for a lot of women to stop drinking when they're pregnant. Not, not just because of hormones and all that stuff. We grow up when there's somebody more important than us. I grew up when I realized that these girls, I'm the stepdad, that these girls wanted me to live. <laughs> they wanted me to stick around. And I realized that I was important to them and they became more important than me. So I said yes to life. And I've been focusing on that for four years. We grow up when there's somebody more important than us. If TikTok cancels you, we'll beat them up. <laughs> You're awesome, bro. But how do I stop my mind from telling me, hang on, telling me uh, the main games are fucking hard. Um, 
Hang on. Quit for, hang, oh, it's, okay. <laughs> uh, you're awesome, bro, but how do I stop my mind from telling me or persuading me I need to drink? You don't stop it. <laughs> you just reprogram it to reach for water. Here's the thing. You've programmed yourself to reach for this. God damn, I'm thirsty. Alcohol. God damn, I'm bored. Alcohol. <laughs> I had nothing to do. Alcohol. You've written all of the codes. So your automatic response is to think about alcohol. Well, we need to start reprogramming your mind to go, I want alcohol. Water. I'm bored. Water. I got nothing to do. Water. You have to write codes through the act of practicing. You have to practice drinking water. Write the code. Write the code. Every fucking time you reach for water instead of serving your thirst, serving your cravings with alcohol, you're writing a stronger, stronger neurological connection to something that's good for you. And your mind is automatically going to just start making healthy decisions just because you're reaching for water. It's, a, it's the same as like reaching for soda, eating food. It's habitual. We've developed a habit of drinking alcohol every fucking time. We got something to do, nothing to do, or bored. Or we're celebrating. You can celebrate with water. Celebration is just a, a, an expression of life. Hell yeah! I celebrated like 50 times today. <laughs> In the last few minutes, I celebrated with water. I'm equally fucking stoked. The thing with that is, it's not stopping your mind. It is controlling your decisions once that shit pops in. Same with anxiety. You, you think like anxiety goes away. It doesn't. It might show up less, but anxiety is a part of life. So is depression. How deep the depression goes depends on what you do and how you process. But my point with that is it's not not having the feeling. It's not, not, it's not about not having the fucking craving. It's about serving those cravings with something good for you until you literally crave water. I'm thirsty. Oh, now I'm thinking about water instead of a fucking beer. There's water in it, right? It's, it's just not like that. So from that standpoint, we call this writing the code, which I cover in module five of Beyond Sober. Uh, as you're writing the code, you realize how fucking strong you are. And if you could write the code to water, you can write the code to the gym. You could write the code to healthy food. You could write the code to healthy thoughts. You could write the code to healthy words. Write the code to anything that you want because life is what you practice. And what you've practiced is the repercussion of all the experiences you've had. A lot of those experiences led you to drink alcohol. So you're really good at it. Now we're going to get really good at drinking water and making healthier decisions. That's what Beyond Sober, that's why we're all, we're all, that's what we're all practicing. Uh, we both want to quit at different times. Yeah, that's, that makes sense, man. They took me to the hospital before jail. <laughs> they can't have you throwing up and detoxing in jail. That's not going to be, that's not going to work. <laughs> How do I stop panic attacks after three days sober? Um, it's not about, once again, stopping them. Now, here's the trip with panic attacks that are around day three. Your body is starting to realize that it's not going to get alcohol anytime soon. So it's starting to, for lack of better words, flip the fuck out. <laughs> Wait, it's been two days. I'm cool. Three days? Three days, no thoughts? What's happening? Something's happening. It actually means you're coming back to life. It means that your body is acclimating to having less or no poison in your body. Day four is the last day, maybe day five, depending on how much you're drinking, is the last day that alcohol is going to be in your system. Day three is usually when people go back down the rabbit hole. <gasps> I'll just drink. That's causing more of the problem. You're still having a panic attack. You just can't feel it. Your body's still going through those symptoms. You just don't care anymore because you're drinking again. That's why we got to figure this shit out. This is why we have to get sleep or rest, drink water, get protein, keep our metabolism running. Fuck, put on the sounds of water, <laughs> whatever. But the reality with these things are is there are some symptoms generally associated with withdrawals that are common. Now, if you're drinking so much alcohol that you have a seizure every fucking time you try and stop, then you have to practice drinking less and less and less and less and less alcohol so you don't have to worry about those withdrawal symptoms. That's what single shot method is. That link is in my bio. Um, how do we live together without enabling each other? <laughs> you both have to be on the same fucking journey. Um, I talk to people, I talk to couples almost every week. 
they go, I'm on my journey and he enables me or she enables me. They're, they, I'm just going to throw Katie out. <laughs> Katie is on her journey where, and her husband is not. He still drinks, still does these things. She's got to stick to her success. She, it, it's her journey. It's her body. It's her machine. It's her story. He respects her enough to not offer drinks and do those things. But that comes with communication. Bro, I'm going to be on the edge of this cliff. Please don't throw me the football. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm standing on the edge, dude. Don't come around me because I might slip. When they respect you, if they respect you, they won't enable you. They won't. They'll respect your journey. But if there's someone who's toxic in your life and that person is someone that you're either related to, married to, or very close to you, and you're dead fucking serious about your sobriety, you've got to be able to set up healthy boundaries and keep these people at a distance. It's your responsibility to keep people at a distance. It's not their responsibility to stay away from you. Did you ever have alcohol seizure? Only when I was in the hospital after liver failure. I want to thank you. Thank you for what you speak. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for opening your mind up. Thank you for being a part of the community and, and your energy, your, your comments, just you being here is actually helping people survive. <laughs> I appreciate you. I'm glad you popped up on my FYP. I was doing so good for two months and then I fell back into it. It happens, man. It happens 100%. That's a part of the journey. There's nothing wrong with that. You just got to realize this. You're either winning or you're learning. So at this point, you're learning where your breaking points are, which means we're not here to fix the alcohol. We're not here to fix your intake. We're here to figure out where those trigger points are because that's why you choose to drink again. It's not the alcohol. It's that part of you that thinks alcohol is, oh, <laughs> swoop goose, what up? Um, it's that part of you that, that switches and goes like, it's the answer now, even though you know it's not. It's the problem. <laughs> I went three months sober, keep falling back, trying to change my habits. I love the fact that you said habits. Everything is habitual, including the way I hold my hands, everything, the way I wear my hat, the way I hold this water, the way I use my words, everything is a habit. I practice this. It is consciously and subconsciously. <laughs> there are certain things I do intentionally out of habit because I practice. Then there are things I just picked up through my experiences that they're just a part of who I am. What up, beeswax? Right? It's so hard to sleep when I don't drink. I got you. Alcohol is lying to you. Alcohol is the reason you, you don't sleep. It actually interrupts the natural paralyzing agents that keep you asleep. So what happens is it's swapped your natural hormones and chemicals that keep you asleep. There's a chemical that keeps your eyes closed so you don't keep your eyes open while you're dreaming. There's another chemical that paralyzes your body so you don't act out your dreams when you're jumping from fucking building to building. <laughs> Alcohol disrupts both of those things and it literally kind of replaces it. So you might be resting, but you're not sleeping. This is why you're fucking exhausted and think about alcohol in the evening because you've conditioned yourself to expect alcohol as a sleep agent. It's not, it's fucking with your sleep. It's fucking with everything. Alcohol is the reason you need it. It's the problem. I watch your videos to stop the urges, so thank you. Fuck yeah, dude. Hey, I recognize your face. Dude, you're so welcome. I appreciate you, man. It's genetics. My grandpa and father and myself are alcoholic. Uh, they are both dead. I'm going to tell you this, Wolfie. None of that shit matters. <laughs> Just because everyone you know is an alcoholic doesn't mean you're an alcoholic. You're an alcoholic because you fucking drink too much alcohol. Period. A genetic predisposition doesn't mean you are going to be an alcoholic. It means that if you drink alcohol the way an alcoholic does, your chances of becoming an alcoholic are way higher. <laughs> There's no, that doesn't mean you can actually be the one to break that shit. Your next bloodline may not even have that gene in it. <laughs> These are facts, scientific fucking facts. And we use that as an excuse. Well, my grandpa was an alcoholic, my mom and everybody I know, they are all alcoholics. That's why I'm an alcoholic. If you don't drink alcohol, you won't become an alcoholic. There's literally zero obligation. It's not even in the constitution <laughs> that you have to drink. If you're an alcoholic and everyone you know is an alcoholic, you're a product of your environment. That's peer pressure. <laughs> Stop listening to people that don't want to see you live a happy and healthy life. Like, that's just it. 
That's it, man. Uh, I have to disagree, bro. It is genetic. Uh, I'm weaker to this. You're proving my point. You, you just proved my point. If you're not drinking alcohol, your genetic predisposition doesn't hold any weight. I'm prone to drowning. Oh, don't go swimming. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm genetically configured to drown faster. We're going to put only two inches of water in the bathtub. <laughs> That's what it is. Just don't go swimming. That's what it is. No, but I have to swim. Says fucking who? You, Michael Phelps? Fuck that guy. He doesn't know that you have a genetic predisposition. And if you're going to drown in the bathtub, you need to start taking showers. You are not a fucking alcoholic because of your genes. You practice alcoholic behavior, so you're an alcoholic. It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking... Your feelings about this don't change the scientific facts. <laughs> I, I could come up with 10 more analogies. <laughs> You're oversimplifying, right? It's both. It, I, I understand. But here's the thing. <laughs> you got a glass... I don't know. I'm not even going to go into this. You guys know what the fuck I'm talking about. Here it is. Yes, ownership. Don't drink. And you won't have problems. It doesn't matter who you are. Once again, if there's, I'm going to tell you this, there's 10 shots on the table. You have a genetic predisposition to become an alcoholic after the 10th shot. Are you going to drink nine or 10? You're not going to drink. Oh, wait, you drank? Told you. And then you're going to blame a genetic G predisposition on the reason why you're an alcoholic. You didn't have to take one shot, but now that you took 10, you fucked yourself. You knew this. And here's the other part of this, is we go, everyone I know is an alcoholic, it runs in my family, that's why I'm an alcoholic and that's why it's okay to drink. That is a typical statement from someone that doesn't wanna accept the fact that they're responsible for their alcoholism. It runs in my family and if I eat chocolate, the chances of me becoming obese are much greater. Don't eat chocolate. Do you understand this? It's literally that basic. It's that basic. You are not born to become an alcoholic. You continue drinking alcohol and you're activating those fucking genes. Period. Now that you're an alcoholic, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to quit. But it's going to be just as difficult if you keep making excuses why you're an alcoholic. I know tons of people with every, every single person in my family is an alcoholic. All of them. All of them. How am I the ex-alcoholic? How? Why, why is that? If I hadn't started drinking, I would have never become an alcoholic to start with. I wasn't, it wasn't written in my destiny, in my fucking path to life, that I was going to be an alcoholic. Fuck, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm genetically, I'm Irish. I got red hair and shit. <laughs> like, I burn really easily. I know that if I go in the sun, I will fry. I'm genetically pale. So, I put on fucking sunscreen and don't go in the sun as often as other people. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna develop skin cancer as, like everyone else in my family, I fucking do the precautionary measures to make sure I don't get skin cancer from my ginger pail. <laughs> it's not an absolute fact that I'm going to fry like the ginger I am. <laughs> I, you see what I'm saying? I'm Mexican, love tequila, but I hate it. I love that statement. I love it, but I hate it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you take precautions. Yeah, 100%. That's it. Now, a, a precaution, here's the thing. Here's going to fuck your shit up. I'm genetically predisposed, predisposed to become an alcoholic. Got it? Understood. So are you going to drink at high risk? Not at all. Or at low risk? If you drink at low risk, which is healthy, you're probably not going to become an alcoholic. Just because you're pre pre genetically predisposed to be an alcoholic, that only activates if you drink in excess. People who are genetically predisposed to becoming an alcoholic can still drink alcohol and not be an alcoholic. I know tons of them. Tons of them. 
More, there's more people that drink healthy that have a genetic predisposition than are fucking alcoholics. It comes down to how much poison you decide to take in because you're not built different. You just have a higher chance of failing than other people. So don't put yourself in that position. You got nothing to worry about, right? You're not bulletproof, right? I'm still a person. It's still a personal choice. The outcome is, <laughs> is on oneself, 100%. So this is like, once again, I'll say this in retrospect. I do, I do look this. Uh, do you have a book, bro? I'll buy it. I really need help. It, uh, help. It's pathetic. Um, I'll buy it. I really need help. It's pathetic. That was interesting for me to read that. <laughs> the book, I, I'm in a book called uh, You Can Overcome Anything Despite the Barriers in Life. I'm actually an international bestselling author. Um, my story is from liver failure to successful entrepreneur. Um, you can look that up. It's actually on Amazon. You can overcome anything despite your barriers in life. I'm in volume one. Wisco Kid is in volume four. We're both international best-selling authors. Super cool shit. Um, once you, hang on, how long would you stop the urge to stop? It depends on what you're practicing. So for instance, let's just say this, you stop completely tomorrow and then you go to the bar. You think the urge is going to stop? Fuck no. You're surrounded by alcohol. But if you end up going to, I don't know, the gym, or go watch a movie or practice drinking water, your urges will go away because you have no influences. Now, some people can stop drinking right now and never have the urge again. I don't even know what it's like to crave alcohol. I have no idea. This version of me has no idea what alcohol even tastes like. I think like kombucha is like the closest flavor. I think, I don't know. Uh, why does this man think he will live? Um, who are we talking about? He's gonna die too. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you. My grandfather was an alcoholic while he was raising me. It was so hard to see him go down. Oh shit, that's rugged. One of the things that we don't realize is we're all watching our parents grow up too. So I'm 36, right? And my mom is like 60, 60 something. So my mom was 30 when I was born. Was, she, was it? Maybe she was younger than that. So, um, but you don't ever feel like you're missing out if you're not drinking? Hell no, man. Fuck it. I, I throw my own parties. I do my own shit. That's called FOMO, fear of missing out. You're not missing out on anything. It's, that's your imagination living in the future, thinking that something fucking astronomically profound is happening, and you're not invo- You're missing out. There's nothing fucking astronomical happening that you're missing out on. What do you think you're missing out on? They're having more fun than me. No, they're not. They're probably not even gonna remember their evening. What, what is it What is it that you think you're missing out on? I have more fun playing Uno with the kids than I ever did standing around a fucking table getting shit-faced with people that I didn't even like. I only liked them because we were drinking. If it wasn't for that shit, I wouldn't even know you. <laughs> Dude, you don't look 36. You look amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I just turned 36. My birthday is May 21st. Um, my four year anniversary was July 11th. <laughs> um, so I've, I'm only four years old. It's fucking crazy. I just shaved by the way, <laughs> April. Uh, my advice would be to find something to be happy for you. 100%. You, you want to be happy for yourself. You got to keep in mind the joy that we create for other things is a reflection of the joy we have for ourselves. The love we have for ourselves is reflected in others. I can say I love you a thousand times. And if you feel something, that's the love that you generate from within. It's not me. Um, every time I try and quit, I start drinking even more. Um, that's, that's all habitual. That sounds like you're setting yourself up to expect to fail. Therefore, you find reasons why that's true. And you do. <laughs> and a lot, also, that emotional disconnect, this is why when you stop drinking, there's a, an emotional grieving process you got to go through. You've spent all your time with this guy. Jack Daniels, that was my best friend. Lil Tito. <laughs> Those are my best friends. And uh, then I had to break up with them. And I realized that I was never going to hang out with them again. That's a love story. If you're a heavy drinker and you've spent a lot of time around the sauce, it's one of the worst breakups you'll ever go through. It's worse than breaking up with your ex. They've, it's, it's a totally different thing. This is why we have a grieving counselor, a grieving coach is because that emotional disconnect, knowing that one of your best friends, you're never going to see again, we're going to see very little of 
you got to go through the breakup, man. It's rugged. It, it fucking hurts. <laughs> so I say that because every time I think about it, or every time I practice not drinking, I end up drinking more. And that's generally not because of the addiction, but because of the love you have for the poison. Uh, keep speaking <laughs> truth from the rooftops. I agree 100. Um, I've quit so many times, but it's it's so difficult. I'm going to finish that sentence for you. Made it one month. Now I keep telling myself today is the last day. It makes me cry. Um, what happened after the month? What, you had a drink? Did you go back to zero or something? Because you know that's not a thing. That's not a relapse. Healthy people drink like that. People get so fucking pissed at me when I'm like, you didn't relapse, dude. <laughs> Healthy people drink more alcohol than you. This is going to fuck your shit up. Because it's an alternate perspective. <laughs> Let's just say you made it a month and then you decided to have a drink. Healthy people that drink alcohol <laughs> will have 40 fucking drinks in a month. That's considered drinking healthy. If you had zero drinks in a month, I'm pretty sure you're probably one of the healthiest people that you know. You had one drink? Fucking shit that's success. You drink less than the healthiest people you know. <laughs> oh, it's true. What about the... <laughs> I've heard they can help with addiction. Yes. Um, I've, I've had a handful, meaning five times. That's why I'm so expansive. <laughs> That's why I'm so creative and out there and wild and weird and random. Um, it's because I've lived in realms that are only capable through extreme hallucinations. Very real, man. It, 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 it's phenomenal. It's low doses. Look into that. I don't encourage that for everybody. Uh, but it feels so good. I'm with you. What makes an alcohol? What makes an alcoholic an alcoholic? Then, an alcoholic is someone that has a physical addiction and emotional entanglement with a poison. Their day, and or week, is set up based on how much alcohol is in their system or is about to be in their system. That's an alcoholic. Someone whose life is configured based on the intake. Someone who thinks about alcohol when it's not around. <laughs> That's just really what it is. Um, that's why I'm so expansive. <laughs> expensive. <laughs> expansive. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, Doc says, uh, PTSD drove my addiction. Absolutely. Uh, stress is one of those things. I'll tell you this. If nobody told you that alcohol is going to help you with your depression, you would have never started drinking. Uh, is this a real chat? I just wanted him to reply. I need help. No, it's not a real chat. I'm not here to help you. I'm here to support you while you help yourself. Hopefully that was a good enough response for you. Ouch, that hit home. You're welcome. <laughs> what about a uh, functioning alcoholic? I, was an, I, I, I am an ex-high functioning alcoholic. That means that this, I used to go through two or three of these, uh, these a day. I used to drink 1,500 milliliters a day. Vodka, beer, all that shit. Um, 1140s, two days bad. Um, 1140s, two days bad. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of fucking alcohol. Um, Functional alcoholics or functioning alcoholics. I did everything under the influence. I drove everywhere. I went to work. I was a DJ. Um, all of my conversations, I went hiking faded. I went to the DMV drunk. Um, went to the movies, all of the restaurants, all the bars, all of every house I've ever been to. Um, everything, everything was under the influence. Either a lot of alcohol or a little bit. Drove every fucking day faded. But I wrote the codes. A functioning alcoholic is someone that actually functions better under the influence because they've practiced acting sober. Here's the trip with a functioning alcoholic. And here's the difference between someone that drinks a lot. Drunks drink to get drunk. Functioning alcoholics drink and act sober. That's shitty shit. <laughs> Everything expect drive, yeah, except drive. Yeah, I'm with you, man. That's crazy shit. Like everything, everything. On the way to the store, I would take shots. On the way, outside of an event, I would be sitting in my parking lot. I remember I got a flat tire once, driving between two cities, two hour drive. <laughs> and then I got a flat tire and someone had taken the jack out of my car, so I had to call AAA. I sat in the trunk of my car with a bottle of vodka, took five, six shots, just waiting for AAA to show up. They fixed my tire, and then I got back in the car and continued driving. 
to the next city, <laughs> got lost, almost ended up in Mexico. <laughs> Fucking crazy shit, man. Drove just fine. Never got a DUI. It's just, it's just a part of your life, man. It's just, that's functioning alcoholic. Now, it doesn't mean I didn't black out. I would set my, my day up. Keep in mind, I'd wake up in cold sweats, just oozing alcohol for years. Extreme depression. Insane anxiety, man. Just absolutely fucking insane. For years, for years, I'd wake up shaking, sweats, cold, nauseous, right? Hair of the dog. I'd wake up at fucking three in the morning and have to take a shot. It's crazy shit. Lots of damage, man. Let's see your head. No. The anxiety. Let's see your head. No. Watch what happens. Um, there's a whole video of me exposing my fucking skull. And if you're really curious, which you're not, you'll go hunt that video down. It says, Polly Shore gets a haircut. For years, I was a uh, functioning alcoholic for two and a half years. I drank for 24 years. 16 of those years was at high, high risk, meaning that like extreme damage. <laughs> the, I mean like partying every night for like 16 years. Like I synced it. <laughs> I synced it. <laughs> I love it. Um, how did you quit? I died <laughs> from liver failure, man. No joke. That's why I'm here, dude. That's why I have one of the most powerful sobriety programs in the world. This is I teach people how to practice drinking less alcohol so they don't end up the way that I did. I died, ended up in ICU twice. I was throwing up blood, poisoned myself, went into surgery. Um, fucking cardiac arrest is no joke, man. Hallucinations, DTs. They, they, they asked me if I even wanted to live. Doctors used to say, this is what death looks like. I wasn't expected to leave the fucking hospital. I was tortured for 250 fucking hours. I lost my ability to walk, lost my house, my car, my job, my money, my friends, family. I spent 18 months recovering. Alcohol is a fucking poison. <laughs> I drink every day alone, I need help. Dude, take a look, come join us in Beyond Sober, you're not alone. Just feels like that, man. Um, I'm filling up blood now, every time I drink, it's scary, but I can't stop, you can stop. You understand, I'm gonna say this to you. The way I found out my liver was failing was when I was throwing up blood, normal, healthy people do not throw up blood and if you're throwing up blood that's a couple of different things but the reason i was throwing up blood is because the veins opened up in my throat why is there throw up in your i'm sorry why is there blood the veins in your throat are very sensitive this is your esophagus it goes into your intestines your entire it, it literally comes out your rectum it's the same material same very 111 same very sensitive material. So every time you throw up, you're literally burning these cords. You're burning your esophagus to something that's called esophageal var varices. The trip with this is these two veins opened in my throat and then they started filling my stomach with blood for hours. I poisoned myself with my own fucking blood. If you're throwing up and you see blood, there's a fucking problem. This is when you seek real medical attention. Regular human beings do not worry if they're gonna see blood. Regular human beings don't throw up every day. Regular human beings, people that either drink nothing or drink in a healthy way, do not worry if they're gonna see blood. That's, that's extreme, that's damage. I'm telling you right now, that's how I figured out I was dying. Now, here's the flip on this shit. If you're not going to take my advice and you want to practice drinking less alcohol, I've known numerous people, 111 Pika, I've known numerous people who have come to me and said, dude, I'm throwing up blood. I've been doing, I've been throwing up blood for years. And then they went to the link in my bio, went to single shot method, and I just had a fucking conversation with them. He's not throwing up blood anymore. He's given himself the break, the time, the energy, the resources, the tools and the respect for himself, and he's not throwing up blood anymore. He's drinking little to no alcohol, and he's doing fucking great. But too many people are gonna talk themselves out of giving a shit about themselves. Remember this, you generate the results you think you deserve, and if you think you deserve to throw up blood, that explains why you're still here with me. I'm, I'm telling you this, man.
It's not a fucking joke. You got to take care of your shit. Either you take care of you or you're going to be forced to take care of you. And when you're forced to take care of you, you're just a number, bro. You're just a fucking number opposed to someone that actually gives a fuck about you because no one's going to care about you the way that you do. And if this is how you care about you, then you're telling the world how to treat you. (laughs) Is your liver better? It is. I've spent four years living a healthy life, literally transforming into a completely different human being. My liver is functioning as close to 100% as possible. If I told you (laughs) what I've done, most of you wouldn't believe me. (laughs) If I told you how much time and energy, how many tears I've shed, how many reps I've done in the gym, all of this stuff, you'd be like, nope, not possible, wouldn't do it. You get good at anything you practice. And I practice caring about me. I practice living a healthy life. I practice happiness. The happier I am, the healthier my machine runs. Polly Shore, what? Yes, I have two years this Saturday. Holy shit, Ryan. I'm so stoked to hear that. Can you drink beer if I wanted to now? Yeah, if I wanted to drink beer, which I don't, <laughs> I could drink beer and not be an alcoholic. I, w- I do not live in fear on whether or not I could have just one beer. That's not a fucking thing. What I do worry about is I have stage four cirrhosis. (laughs) And the doctor told me, if you drink, you will die. And I don't really feel like dying. So I'm not going to do that. (laughs) Who was there when you left the hospital? Um, When I left the hospital, the same person that was there when I was in the hospital was my fiance. Um, She was the one that called 911 too. She was the one, she was standing behind me as I was shaking wishing for more alcohol after I'd thrown up blood. She was with me every single day, every step of the way. Um, she's my lifesaver, man. She's been my rock this entire time. Um, really fucking amazing woman. Absolutely just phenomenal human being. And, uh, um, but when I was rolled out of the hospital because I couldn't walk anymore. Hey buddy. (laughs) When I was rolled out, um, hello, who is this? Virgin, not the static, Virginian, 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 uh, the stat, Virginia, the static, I don't know what the fuck your name says, what up, (laughs) how you doing, so good to see you, Virginian, what's up man, related to Polly, maybe he's related to me, is this like a Polly brigade, what's up y'all, so good to see every single One of you found time just a little bit. We got some time left. Uh, please say so. Did you do anything to keep drinking uh, nose beers? Not sure what that means. Please say if so. Did you do anything to keep drinking nose beers? I don't know what that means. Can you reverse stage four? Uh, there's about 1% of people, if my facts are semi correct, um, about, f- if, I'm sorry, five to seven percent of people will do the necessary work to reverse the damage they did to themselves. It will never be 100%. I have stage four, which is the last. Uh, Please extend the time. (laughs) I've been here for like two hours. (laughs) Uh, So with that, um, living a healthy lifestyle, drinking water, getting sleep, thinking healthy thoughts, getting to the gym, physical fitness, really taking my shit seriously, I've been able to transform into a whole new fucking being, man. Like I shared, literally the cells in my body are completely different from the alcoholic. 100%. That comes with practice. So my liver is operating as close to 100% as possible. I also have an inflamed spleen. I've got an umbilical hernia. I take my life and my health very seriously. Yeah, I drink some caffeine. I got some other shit. Yeah, I eat out from time to time. But I put in the work, man. I take care of me, man. Um, I want heal. I feel you. So did it take, uh, hang on. So did it take for your liver to give out in order for you to stop drinking? Yeah. I had to die to start giving a fuck. 100% Liz. I, if I did not, if my liver didn't fail, I would have kept drinking until it did. That's how extreme of an alcoholic I was. Uh, nose beers. <laughs> I get it. Milk thistle. Milk thistle does not fix anything, but it does help your liver function more appropriately. So it improves your liver function but it does not fix anything. Same with green tea, really good. Uh, Cirrhosis is irreversible. Um, That's not true. The the scarring is permanent. The damage is permanent, uh, but the function can be reversed. 
So you may have done a lot of damage, but you can heal from that and your liver can still function as close to 100 as possible. Um, stage four isn't always terminal. I'm one of the very few about the, I'm part of the 43% that has lived past one year. If you can make it past one year, you're pretty good to go. Um, people that develop cirrhosis that do not reverse the damage will have about nine to 12 years after they develop cirrhosis. Here's the fucking thing though. Most people are going to develop cirrhosis and not even know it. They're going to show zero symptoms. Their liver is not going to throb. They're not going to throw up blood. They're not going to turn yellow. They're just going to do fucking damage. And they're going to do that until it's too late. And then 1% of those people will develop new symptoms every single year until they die. <laughs> Alcohol is a fucking poison. <laughs> I don't even know how else to say this shit. I say it out loud and I'm like, God damn, why were we taught this shit? Who the fuck kept this away from us? Oh, it's because it's how they make the money. <laughs> it's population control. Uh, please read this. You were a DJ uh, in that world. Drugs are a part of it. Um, how did you deal with uh, that and alcohol? I did it. <laughs> I was an international fucking DJ. I used to play with all kinds of fucking celebrities. I drank the alcohol and did the things. That was my whole life. I died as a rock star <laughs> at 32. That was my deathbed, man. I went out going like thinking like Kurt Cobain type shit. Yeah, 27 and shit. My point is, is that I, the scene consumed me. I couldn't DJ without being faded. I could not party, 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 party. It was my whole fucking life. That's why it became my existence. Alcohol was my personality. Um, how do you know... Hang on, how do you know about the liver going? Um, I'm assuming what you're asking is, what are the symptoms? Um, your, your liver sometimes will throb. You might develop some fluids in your system. You might bulk out, you might swell. Um, your abdomen might do something called distend. Um, you'll, you'll be sore. There'll be some pains in your liver, also in your kidneys. A lot of this has to do with dehydration. Um, you'll be really tired. You'll sweat a lot. Your skin might turn yellow. Your eyes will probably turn yellow. Mine were bright fucking yellow. Your teeth might turn yellow. Your tongue might start turning brown. Um, there's all kinds of fucking things, man. You start to look like shit. <laughs> Not laughing, but it's, you look like shit, man. There's videos of me looking like absolute fucking hell on TikTok. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I have cirrhosis and it's been five years. Dude, that's fucking amazing, man. You got to continue living a healthy life, dude. Do healthy things. Think healthy things. Like literally your mind is enough to heal your body. You got to live a healthy fucking life, man. I'm super proud of you. I know there's some struggles with that, um, but you're not fucked forever. Fasting. I generally do, will do a fast. Um, do like 10, 12, 12 or 16 hour fast. I'll do something where I won't eat past 8 p.m. Uh, all the way to 11 in the morning. I feel trapped. That's a shitty feeling, man. Um, did you get kidney stones? No. So here's a trip. Uh, hang on. So I feel trapped 100%. And, and that's a shitty fucking feeling. Um, that feeling of being trapped is literally saying I have all this energy. I've got all this, all this drive, but I don't know what to do with it. I feel like I'm running in circles. It's this fucking maze of bullshit. And the reason we feel like that is because we keep doing the same fucking shit, expecting different results. <laughs> Nothing is going to be any different. You might think, oh, well, I ate a salad today. You need to eat 10,000 more salads and make that a part of your life. <laughs> you're, not, you're not healthy because you ate a salad. You're not healthy because you did that one nice thing for that one person. You're not transforming your life because you went to the gym once. You do, you change, you shift, you transform. You do things that the healthy version of you would do. Otherwise, you feel trapped. Even with other influences. There could be people literally holding you in a room. If you're still the weak person in the room, you're never going to kick the fucking door down. <laughs> Ever. You're going to find reasons why you deserve to be trapped. Remember, we generate the results we think we deserve. So if you feel trapped, it's because you subconsciously or very consciously think that's where you're supposed to be. Until you start realizing that you're fucking over your shit and you're done with that feeling, you're going to stay exactly where you are. This is why we have the program. And so there's thousands of people that know exactly how you feel 
and have found individual ways to not be trapped. Here's the fucking tools. Here's the resources. Here's the family. Here's the friends. Here's, here's everything you need. But if you don't do anything with the solution, you're going to stay trapped with all of the tools we just gave you. Uh, what do you think of the keto? Keto is great. Actually, um, I know someone that just slimmed way down from keto. User, thank you so much. Slim way down from keto. It's, it's good stuff. I don't recommend it for everybody. Um, alcohol is legal. Yeah, it's, it's one of the most addictive drugs on the planet. <laughs> it's population control. It's a fucking conspiracy, dude. Like, the, the further away I get from alcohol, the more I realize how, how trapped I actually was. I didn't get any kidney stones. Uh, what do you, um, hang on. Um, have you ever reached out to up-and-coming artists who are in... Yeah, absolutely. I talk to artists all the time. I talk to people in bands. I just I, There's a new DJ that's actually in the program. I'm like, bro, you're going to have to measure how much you like to party against how much you like not being an addict. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I talk to him all the fucking time because that became the only way that I can enjoy myself is if I was seriously fucking faded. And that got me into a lot of extreme situations, right? Uh, fructose. How do you say that shit? Hang on. I'm numbing. Uh, hang on. Is numbing toes a horrible sign? Yeah. Um, I believe that's a sign of neuropathy. I had neuropathy in my thighs. Um, sometimes our body will swell and kind of cut off the blood flow to our limbs. <laughs> That's a sign, um, of your liver, liver struggling that alcohol will do that to you. Um, did you, I smoked after I was out of the hospital to help with my neuropathy. Um, I had a pen and, uh, I'm just a naturally paranoid person because of my social anxiety. <laughs> so the pen didn't help me with that, but it did help numb the pain. Um, <laughs> And I smoked for, I don't know, a couple months until I was able to deal with the, the tingly sensation in the top of my thighs. Um, tell them about the sleepwalking when you're blacked out. Dude, once your mind shuts off, man, you have something called autopilot footprints. It, it, you just do. You're, like the codes still fire. So you're remember this. When you black out, that's your brain literally disconnecting from you. It's like I've been trying to save you this whole fucking time. I'm leaving now. And your mind literally shuts off and stops recording because it, it doesn't, it realizes that what it's designed to do, keep you safe, isn't working. So it goes to save itself. <laughs> That's what a blackout is. And so many people go like, I drink the blackout and I do all this shit. Your brain is literally tired of you. <laughs> I had a conversation with an amazing woman today. She's like, I'm blacking out sooner and sooner and sooner. Your brain is telling you it's fucking done. It's done. There's no reason you understand that blacking out isn't typical human behavior. It's not like, I, oh, I blacked out on a Tuesday. Oh, it's your typical Tuesday blackout. You do it naturally? <laughs> no, you drank too much alcohol too fucking fast. Your brain left and literally took off on you and left you fucking hanging. And you kept trucking along <laughs> doing all that shit that you don't remember. It's crazy shit. I had to learn this after I died, man. It's crazy. I've been drinking less, but now noticing shadows. Yep. That's, um, that's DTs, dude. Um, I once had such bad DTs that billions of sidewalk spiders consume my entire body. I was also eaten alive by a foot massager that was very angry. I've also slept next to demons and goblins. <laughs> Thank you for the flamos. Um, I have also hallucinated people in the corner of the room and I was very perturbed by an angry Lego <laughs> who acted like a fucking envelope on the wall. No joke, man. When you push yourself to those extremes, you start to see shit. Even four years later, I still see, but what, what the fuck? I trip out. Like my brain is like, it's been, those, it's PTSD. Like I have trauma from my trauma, obviously. And part of that is me seeing these random things. Four years later, I know that it's my mind tripping out so I don't respond to that. Almost like a like a schizophrenic can kind of like, like my boy Cody, he knows, most of the time he knows whether or not he's hallucinating or seeing something um, in the same way that I recognize that it's just something getting my attention. It's not an actual bug on the wall. <laughs> and that thing is not actually trying to eat me. Uh, stop tripping on LSD, man. That's what hallucinating is, man. It's fucking, it's trippy. When your brain is struggling, it will do anything to save itself, including create imaginary figures. 
Um, oh shit! <laughs> that's fucking get it. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's awesome. Fucking thank you, man. Uh, the worst part is that the best feeling when drinking is seconds before you black out. Is that's the dopamine, man? You're like, God damn, I feel good. That's as when you chase the dopamine. A lot of people that have I see one eleven. When you have a ADHD, man, that peak right there. Sadly, you don't really remember that. It fucking sucks. That's the poison, man. You gotta, you gotta remember this. It, it, thank you so much. You gotta remember that your body is adapting to a poison and trying to fucking acclimate to something that's not supposed to be there. Thank you so much. In the same way that when I was dying, my brain was trying to make sense of things and tapping into my subconscious and literally I was hallucinating Oh shit, Michelle just joined the program. Fuck yeah, Michelle. Welcome to the Beyond Sober community. I'm so stoked for you. My brain is creating all these figures, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. DMT is releasing my body, my hormones, all that shit, you know? And so <laughs> your brain does, the same way that your brain's going, this isn't, this isn't normal. And it's trying to figure out what's happening is the same thing that's happening with alcohol. It's not supposed to be in your body. It's a fucking, it, it's, it's a poison. You're poisoning yourself. I did this for years. And so your body is fighting this stuff off and reacting and doing all these things. Dude, right? It's a trip, dude. This is why we're supposed to drink responsibly. Eat water. Don't drink when you're emotional. Don't drink to get drunk. Don't drink to black out. I'm not saying that if you drink and got drunk, there's a problem. It's like if your goal in your drinking process is to get fucking obliterated. It's literally the same as, hey, I'm gonna go jump in front of a semi. Who's coming with me? <laughs> Got him. Stop doing that shit. How old are you now? I just turned 36 in May. Um, opinion on ant abuse from the 80s. I don't, I'm from the 80s. Um, I don't remember ant abuse. I know that word though. Um, how do I join the program? Click the link in my bio, right? When you click that, it says Cody Life. Uh, then it says Beyond Sober Program. Click that. And if you guys are struggling to drink less alcohol, you could also take a look at Single Shot Method. I'll I'll, I hope you practice drinking less alcohol the same way a superstar or an athlete trains to be a superstar. Um, how can society normalize not drinking? Um, it's as simple as not glorifying it. You got to remember this in every fucking movie. Think about this, dude. If John Wayne, if you guys know who John Wayne is, <laughs> we're just going to say this. We'll, we'll say it like this. this is, hey, so Brad Pitt. If you never saw Brad Pitt with a drink in his hand, if you and if you did see him with a drink in his hand, it was water, we'd all be very healthy people. Normalizing not drinking is the same as healthy being cool. All of the most successful and healthy people I know take care of themselves. Why is it such a it's been normalized to challenge yourself with a fucking poison? It's just that's immature shit that we all took on and got really good at doing. It's just been society has taken this on and going, guess how much poison I could drink without dying? Guess how much I could drink without dying? That's what hazing is and all kinds of stuff. So we got to realize this, man. I'll say this now that I'm thinking about it. The only way that I or one of the primary ways that I could. That I imagine normalizing not drinking would work is if everybody acted drunk with no alcohol. Are you drunk? Nope. Weird. Only drunk people do that shit. You sure you're not drinking? I haven't had anything. Then why are you skipping down the fucking street in a tutu blazing fucking, you know, Taylor Swift and shit? Only drunk people do that shit. We're skinny dipping. I'm happy, dude. When happiness looks like the activities of those that drink, then it becomes normalized. But this is why most people have to drink alcohol to act happy. They're not actually happy. They just do what happy people would do. Now they need the sauce to act happy. How about you just get happy <laughs> and then be happy and share that happy. I like your bit. <laughs> What's happening here? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. My parents and the authorities are still trying to figure that out. <laughs> what movie was that from? <laughs> Peace out, world. Stay sober. Drink water. Hell yeah. Have you heard of chemical counter conditioning to stop drinking alcohol? It works. I haven't heard of that. That's I got to look into that. Drinking doesn't equal glamour. 100%, dude. Give me a heart like this. <laughs> I'll give you two, three, four, five. Get it. 
I got clean and started doodling. Fuck yeah, dude, do that shit. Are you single? No, I've been engaged for five years. <laughs> what a great way to deal with past trauma without for, uh, forgetting, forgetting with alcohol. Yes. Okay, what's a great way to deal with past trauma without forgetting with alcohol? Uh, here's the coolest part. You don't have to fucking heal from your traumas. Thank you. Smell the flowers. <laughs> you do not have to heal from your traumas. You just have to accept them. I talk about this in module one. Module one is the most powerful fucking module of the Beyond Silver program. It's 1111 over here. You see that shit? It's bouncing around, which means I got a few minutes before I got to go to sleep. <laughs> so check it out. Your traumas are only really worth your time when you practice acceptance. If you can't accept things for what they are and what they aren't, then you're trying to heal something from a place that you don't understand. You have to accept these things. The, part of your traumas are accepting things that you never had to accept to start with. The chances of you understanding your traumas are very low unless you practice acceptance, man. Accepting that it happened to you and also accepting the fact that you don't have to heal from it. Also accepting the fact that it happened for you and not to you. I mean, it felt like that, but there's a reality. You also got to accept the fact that it's not real. It's real in your mind because you choose to bring it into your future. You choose to apply emotions to something that is not real. The fact that we continue bringing that up is a very important one because that's the why. It defi it, your traumas do not define who you are. It defines who you think you are. It defines who you think you're supposed to be based on that trauma. Who you are now defines who you're going to be. How old were you when you stopped drinking? It's not that I stopped drinking. I died <laughs> at 32. Um, hang on. Uh, oh, advice to stop my mind from worrying all night? Yes, absolutely. You want to hear one of the most, the coolest things? Hey, check this out. You ready? When it comes to worrying, can you prove to me in any way whatsoever that the amount of worry you have is the reason that thing doesn't happen. Do you have any proof whatsoever that the amount of worry that you have is the reason that plane didn't crash? The amount of worry you have is the reason why the accident didn't happen or they didn't say that thing or they didn't, you do understand? No amount of worry changes anything the only thing that it shifts is your peace you practice giving about shit uh, giving a shit about things that change nothing you're you, this is it's the same as your emotions don't change the facts it's either going to happen or it's not you worrying about it isn't a defining factor on whether or not it will or will not happen period and here's more power for you. You attract what you think about the most. You manifest what you think about the most. And if what you think about the most is the shit you worry about, you're creating the fucking problem you're attempting to worry out of existence. If it happens and it wasn't in your favor, you may have been the reason that it happened. It's because you keep thinking about it. You're putting your vibes, your energy, your intent into the universe and it's going, obviously this is what she wants. <laughs> obviously she wants the plane to crash. Obviously she wants this thing to happen. She won't stop thinking about it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just, we'll just make that happen. You attract what you are. So if you are a peaceful human being, someone who practices acceptance, <laughs> then you're not putting any energy into things that you can't control. No amount of worry changes a fucking thing, period. This is why I care, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I have many fucks to give. Where I give them is not always in the place that I care about. <laughs> How many drinks a day would you have on average? 30 or more. Why is it a she? Because it was a girl who asked that shit. <laughs> is it Selena? Selena asked. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pyramids. Word. <laughs> uh, love it. So you, you see what I'm saying, man? Like, there's, there's nothing. This is why it's like, we have... the. Here's what's up. 
worry about yourself. You worry about yourself. <laughs> worry about you, man. Worry about your next steps. Worry about what you really want to do. Worry about what matters, what really fucking matters. You, here's the thing. When, you, when you're a servant, when you're taking care of other people, you could worry on their behalf, absolutely. A healthy worry is something that's going to adjust your behavior and guide your decision making. I'm, I'm actually, I don't trust that person, so I worry this isn't going to go very well, so I'm going to take this precautionary measure just in case. Not, I'm going to sit here awake all fucking night, I really hope it doesn't happen, I really, you really hope what doesn't happen? That car accident, I really hope they're going to be like, why are you thinking about something you have no control over? I don't know, I'm just really good at fucking worrying, I'm worrying, I'm worrying, you're just fucking with your own life right there, man. It's not that you don't matter, it's not that you, here's something else, just because you're not worrying doesn't mean you don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't worry about many people. My fiance is in fucking Florida. She's literally hanging out with alligators. She's never even been there. But no amount of worry that I have over here is going to stop her from getting eaten. <laughs> she's going to touch a tooth or something. Either she's going to do it or she's not. But I'm not going to worry about her because I trust her. <laughs> she's, get, she's capable of making all the right decisions. <laughs> Everything you think you say makes perfect sense, especially when I need to hear it the most. Thank you. Dude, that's so awesome. <laughs> Bye, bud. So good to see you, man. I actually got to take off, too. I, I got to bounce. You can see I'm starting to get slow. Um, with that, I'm actually going to be live here tomorrow morning. I'm going to go hit the gym. Oh, shit. Yeah. A um, couple of different things. Oh, shit. It's going down. Thank you, man. Sincerely appreciate you. So check this out. All of my lives are on my website. So as of tomorrow... All of the lives from last week and all of the lives from this week, just like this, will be on my website, cody.io. I'll uh, make sure I'll put a link in my bio. So if, yeah, I appreciate you. So if for whatever reason you want to replay this, you can go ahead and uh, check it out on my website. Hit live replay. Everything is totally free. Um, and you could watch this. I'm actually going to turn this into a TV station and a radio station. So when you guys are just chilling, you could just pop on Cody radio. <laughs> Listen to all the dumb shit that I say. Thank you so much. And uh, <laughs> for any of you that are really looking towards making a shift, you guys want to join a community? Oh my God, thank you. You're full of amazing people that are encouraging each other and acting as each other's sponsors. If you want to be a part of the Beyond Sober program just like this and literally start becoming the best version of yourself, either click the link in my bio and click on Beyond Sober program. Come join us or go to beyondsoberprogram.com, man. Share it with the world. There's more than enough room, dude, and I'd love to support you. Not only that, but we get a chance to meet personally. So if you're interested in having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, I offer my calendar to everyone that decides to invest in themselves, man. If you can afford a shirt, then that means you can afford a future <laughs> that you love to live. With that said, you are amazing. You could have been anywhere doing anything and you decided to share yourself with me today. Share your shelf. <laughs> you decided to sh share yourself <laughs> with me. I understand and know and honor your time because it's valuable. And because I respect your time and your attention, I wanna make sure that I pack that with as much value as possible because you're never gonna get this time back. It's gone forever. And so, thank you. I sincerely appreciate you. If you guys enjoyed this, then I'm live every Monday through Friday. I'm here live 20 hours a month on TikTok, helping you guys move forward, helping you guys make moves, helping you make magic, helping you transform into someone that you truly enjoy being. With that said, man, I got to peace out. Just like my mother always says, take care of you.